There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. Oh, yes. On the left. <laughs> That's when the cannibalism started. But the thing is, is that the Scream soundtrack had, the original Scream soundtrack had fucking Nick Cave on it. It was great. I remember those, hat, man. Soundtracks used to be different. Yeah. We did a whole No Dogs episode on it. You ever, you know what you really should do? If you, For me, one day, you should do something about the Crow soundtrack. That was in it. That was part of it. The like, Crow that was a part of the whole thing. One of my, it's still one of my favorite albums of all time. Me too. It's not an album. It's a sound, it's a compilation, but, you know. You're fucking idiot. You're fucking, <laughs> yeah, you fucking moron. I hope Scientology crushes you. <laughs> I hope they crush you. I hope they tear apart your personal life. I hope they tear apart your business life. <laughs> no. It's fine. It's, they could. It's still just not going to make the Crow soundtrack an album. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm interbulated. Do I have my pamphlet music? Do we have my pamphlet music? Because I'm already interpolated. Um, yeah, I understand, buddy. I had, uh, I had a, I crossed my mind. It blew my mind the other night. What? Right? I was sitting thinking. Sitting as there always. thinking. Mm -hmm. as thinking as executive time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> executive time. And I realized, what if fucking a fish getting hard enough to have sex with a fish, mm -hmm. that's OT9. <laughs> wow. Wouldn't that be something? Great day to be a fish. I don't know. You have to get your whole abdomen torn open by the, a minuscule fantastic actor. Well, there you <laughs> go. It's very difficult. And then you're fucking at spine. You got your spine at the bottom of your... Right. Like, like, it's yeah. all a hole. It's a hole. A uh, rigmarole. Yeah, when you tiny, put it like that. Yeah, the tiny little ribs, the fish ribs. Yeah. They're, it's not going to feel good. I it's not, they're not going to tickle. They're going to cut. It wouldn't feel good for anybody, I don't think. No. But, well, again, that's why you must be clear. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to be You got to be in ethics if you want to have sex with a fish. Welcome to the last podcast on the left, everyone. Ben hanging out with Henry and Marcus. Uh. None of us <laughs> have had sex with a fish. We're not good. Scientologists. Yeah, unfortunately, no. just bad at it. All right, everyone, it's time for part three of our tale of David Miscavige. Ooh. Now, we've made a lot of hay out of David Miscavige's tiny, hard body over mm. the last couple of weeks. He looks like if a Chucky doll was in his tanning bed. <laughs> <laughs> we have, and there there is controversy with these episodes. The main controversy, people have been sneaking into my DMs, <laughs> is Henry's impression of David Miscavige attacking, is it a flying crossbody or is it a clothesline? <laughs> I, we I believe about this last we night. had two different varying words it's when a, we discussed it. It's a flying crossbody. Okay. Because it's full torso attack. It's ah! <laughs> because he wants to make sure that he hits you with his belly button. Got you. <laughs> but not okay. in a sexual way because he has no sexual feelings. Perfect. Clears right. it all up. Yeah, no crossbody. It's not a Goldberg. It's more like it's not like a big shoulder tackle. Nope. It is crossbody. It's crossbody. It's a crossbody. It, it is attacking someone literally with your pubic bone. Perfect. <laughs> well, perhaps all this attention on David Miscavige's tiny hard body is what's partly drawn the attention of a Scientology Twitter front called Hate Monitor, which <laughs> in a series of tweets over the last couple of weeks have managed to make the three of us look both evil and super fucking radical. It's the well, coolest we've ever looked. They're using the <laughs> images of when we did Red Rocks when we actually looked like people would have sex with us. Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> so uh, cool. And now we're getting calls. Now we're getting phone calls. We're getting we're, a lot of phone calls from the Church of Scientology. Actual phone calls from, we know for a fact that they are from the Church of Scientology. The yep. uh, actual caller ID is oh, the yeah. Church of Scientology. Oh, it's funny. They just put it on the ID. Yeah. I guess they have to for legal reasons. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more and more because they are a church still technically according <laughs> yeah. to the eyes of the most sacred body in the United States of America the IRS mm -hmm. absolutely and also they uh the yeah so they're coming at us pretty hard uh -huh. but I find it interesting because we talked massive shit mm -hmm. about Mormonism <laughs> for like <laughs> 10 hours it like 15 so hours 13 yeah. hours right we never got a single call nothing no. for Mormonism you know why for Mormons you know why it's because they're confident yeah. confident and you know what I think uh, you know mm -hmm. what I might blame a little bit on Scientology and why Mormonism are chill it's a lack of caffeine. Could they're be. Not, they're not all like, they're not all up in it. But uh -huh. also the Mormons, I think, are confident in what they give to their parishioners. Yeah. That they're, the arrangement of you believing in our weirdo beliefs is that we actually create, we're trying to create this quote unquote loving environment Could be. for you. And they put a lot of effort into that loving environment front, which we're seeing that Scientology doesn't really do. And it leaves a bitter taste. It does. In the mouths of. Of their parishioners. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Got to show a little love. Just a tiny little Just bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. That's honestly, hug a Scientologist. <laughs> Seriously, bro, you like be nice to one because we're trying to get them out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But the thing about David Miscavige's hard little body is that it takes a lot of work to stay little and hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. Look at me. Does it? I'm little and yeah. soft. Okay. And it takes next to no work. That's true. <laughs> but his physical form is only the base level of what makes David Miscavige tick. Oh, yeah. See, running America's second most successful cult into the ground through a long pattern of assault, kidnapping, human trafficking, and possibly murder, that requires a lot of what you called executive time. Executive time. Executive time. time. It's not nothing. It's idea formation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're sitting and hanging out. Because you remember, this is David Miscavige at the height of his powers. Yeah. After last episode, we see he is fully consolidated, yep. all the leadership under him, and now we're watching him take the Church of Scientology out for a ride like it's yeah. some kind of like demolition derby car and even at the height of his powers still only five foot three and that is why when scientology He's at called the short me, of his power there we go and that's when when scientology called me yesterday yes i did answer and i actually want to tell both of you sps that i am now oh, in charge oh, i am now in charge six I foot seven i can softer can version flutes. can i have my pan flutes please please can i please have i am now in charge of scientology new rules uh -huh. number one Smile more. That's Honestly, number that's one. not bad. Sometimes you have to be happy on the outside first. Higher carbs. Mm -hmm. And number three, <laughs> that fish, <laughs> we're going to deep fry it. <laughs> Well, you, you want to just do a fee you just want to do a fish fry, but honestly, I, I'm bringing the Catholic fish fry to Scientology. Okay. Doing an international fish fry actually will do a lot more than the Church of Scientology. Wow, I can mm -hmm. see your blood pressure going from 170 over 120 to 169 over 119. See, 169 is <laughs> a funny number. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but as we'll see, assault, kidnapping, and human trafficking are all not only essential to Miscavige's executive time, but somewhat the point, because David Miscavige's version of Scientology doesn't really work without assault, kidnapping, and human trafficking. Because he has to keep you afraid to make you stay in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. Because they don't have any benefits. Yeah. Right. But the thing about executive perks is that they can't just be paid for on spec because Scientology owns a lot of real estate. That requires liquid assets if you want to keep everything flowing, if you want to keep the bills paid, you want to keep the lights on. Mm. And if your cult doesn't have the membership that it once did, if it ever had much of a membership at all, then where do you get your cash? Also, oh, if you uh, search Pornhub for liquid assets, it ain't about finances, my friend. You're talking about squirt. Yeah. You're talking about squirt. Yeah. Um, uh, David Miscavige, he got it the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. like, oh, he's selling cookies. <laughs> like, you know, how, how one makes money. You know, like, I know how people make money. The uh, yeah. widgets. Mm -hmm. I would never trust a man with a six-pack to sell me cookies. But also nope. remember, like, they, they are getting, when they do get their cash, they have to spend it. Yeah. Because as a church, they're not supposed to hold on to it. So, huh. We're just going to have to spend all this money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the answer where they get that money from is gullible, emotionally vulnerable, incredibly rich celebrities. Who will think of them? <laughs> I know. Well, to put it into perspective, the 10 richest Scientologists are worth conservatively, this is on the low end, about $9 billion. Ooh. Ah, who's that? All right. Billion with a B. Mm. But it also must be said that not all of those richest Scientologists are celebrities. Well, as we notice, most billionaires, mm -hmm. really good billionaires, don't want you to know their names mm -hmm. because they're mm -hmm. moving around in the background making a bunch of decisions and they don't want you to know that they can then tank their own company by being an asshole in public. Oh, mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about the shadow government? <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> yes. have to there. Oh. <laughs> but even though Scientology's richest members do indeed have a lot of money, not all of their money goes to Scientology, of course. Okay. So how does one shore up the rest of the cost. And how does one spend all that money but make sure that none of that money makes it to the people at the bottom? How right. does David Miscavige give the illusion of wealth and power while still keeping a stranglehold on all of the people still in? Well, the answer is simple, sir. Slave labor. That's all Whoa. you need. All you need is about at this point, a couple of straggling thousand, mm -hmm. like people that you've yeah. made so tired and hungry and scared yes. that they'll just do whatever it is you tell them to do. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and so today's conclusion will be all about David Miscavige's decadence, the torture he has employed in the past to satisfy his own twisted urges, as well as keep people in the church. 
And we're also going to cover the celebrities that Miscavige's regime has kept close to the vest for all these years. Mm. This, of course, includes a certain celebrity oh. who had David Miscavige <laughs> serve as the best man at his last failed wedding. Whoa. Number three by this reporter's Who's count. Who's dishing now? Wow. So... Who could this celebrity, who's considered by some to be Scientology's top gun, possibly be? I don't know, Marcus. Who's it going to be? Yeah, please do tell. Well, what we do know about this top gun... Is that, <laughs> I know now. ...is that he's come in and out of Scientology a few times over the years. But when he returned for the final time in the early 2000s, his physique inspired David Miscavige to, quote-unquote, get ripped. David Miscavige. Oh, man. I get ripped. <laughs> That's what I do. I don't even bring a piece of paper around me. <laughs> he loves the term ripped. He mm -hmm. likes to get He's ripped. ripped. Mm -hmm. He is. He's solid as a pebble. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's why he runs such a risky business. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. It's a good pun. That's a good pun. You're getting into it. We're talking about. Oh, here. we can't see him. Where are they? I don't know. <laughs> Now, Miscavige has always been a muscular little boy, a pebble, as you said. I absolutely <laughs> fucking love that term. Yeah. But when a certain top gun returned with Mission Impossible 2 muscles, Miscavige started talking about getting ripped almost constantly. Great. I uh, love when guys talk about that constantly. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It and, shows that they're very secure. And ripped. <laughs> And here's where we're going to get into the decadence of David Miscavige. We're going to put a pause on the Top Gun. You're going to have to wait to see who that Top Gun is. So, as we are piecing these <laughs> series together, I also want to make sure that our audience knows that, like, we're pulling as much information from about six or seven different sources. Many different there sources. are uh, constant different, like, Scientologist blogs on the internet, former Scientologist blogs. Also, and we're trying to compile the life of David Miscavige. It's actually very difficult to do yeah. because he is a very private an intense man and the people he keeps really close to him, he either betrays or are also so in on it that no one really wants to talk about his inner life. So what we're doing here is really kind of pulling together what it is that we know mm -hmm. that he's done. Because like we talked about the consolidation of power, but the fact that now that he's completely fucking in charge and he has this like bunch of money and he's not working on tech. Right. Yeah, what does he do with all that shit? Mm -hmm. Getting ripped. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the people that we're bringing it from, I mean, Mike, uh, Mike Rinder, excuse me, Mike Rinder. Rinder. Like, like, like Spender, not like Grinder. Yep. Uh, Mike I know Rinder. you love your Grinder. <laughs> Oh, yes, and a hoagie. It's such a fun word to say. It is. Rod Grander. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun thing to do, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You doing it? Uh, I've been on the dating apps a little bit. Wow. Yeah, I was on Big and Tender. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, and then, I, and then I realized I was just ordering up to them. I was just ordering food. <laughs> I am on Big and Tender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find me a dog one of these days. Uh, well, Mike Render. Uh, he is the one who actually has get, has given us the most information or has given the world the most information about David Miscavige's life, or at least until Mike Rinder left Scientology in like the mid to late 2000s. 2007. Yeah. We, what we're basically trying to do is coordinate, like triangulate a bunch of different sources to get whatever we can. Yeah. I just recently been reading Mark Headley's Blown for Good, <laughs> uh, which is a great, I do love the title of it. It's very funny. Um, but Mark Headley is another, was a young dude. He has another perspective it's more just understanding that when you have so many people all saying the same exact very similar stories about mm -hmm. a man you that that is probably the truth yeah mm -hmm. well in order to get ripped miscavige escalated his already decadent lifestyle habits that had by the early to mid-2000s reached their peak just as scientology was also reaching the height of its power and visibility before it began to crumble are we talking kim.com here or are we talking papa john's Kim.com. What's Kim.com? Oh, guys, you know Kim.com? No. He was no. an internet mogul. He ended up getting arrested and uh, I believe he's currently incarcerated. Wow. Fantastic documentary on him. Really? Well, <laughs> let's just move on. <laughs> are you talking about the power of the Papa? I was like, are we talking no, about do Papa? Do you remember when Papa John's gave us a tour of his home? Oh, uh, yes, sure. Yeah, are we yes. talking like that? Far beyond that. Oh, yeah. Far beyond yeah. Papa John. Oh, he's far beyond. Uh, actually, I don't. Papa John's, I think, is a fucking billionaire now. Papa John is I think super his reckoning rich. was way more talking about the back end. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, it could be. But on the other hand, uh, Papa John also does not have an army of near slaves. You don't know what I have. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you don't know what I have. Like, our day of reckoning is coming. I have a thousand pieces of tears. <laughs> They're coming to your studio. A thousand pizza tears going through your garbage. 
<laughs> uh, David Miscavige, if we're talking food here, he had employed two personal chefs for years, but when he wanted to get ripped, he had them enter everything he ate into a huge spreadsheet to ensure that every meal was 40% protein exactly oh, and no more than 400 calories. And all that shit's in exact science. What? What a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He'd be fed four meals a day. And by the way, uh, David Miscavige, despite his ongoing asthma, chain smokes like a mother. You wouldn't believe how much he smokes. You can tell by his voice, though. He's got that. He's got the, yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. We're building a gate to the future. <laughs> Even my current impersonation of him is far friendlier. Whatever you heard about us, if you haven't heard us from you us, gotta hear you got to hear from us. Hear from me. <laughs> We're doing really well. <laughs> I mean, honestly, smoking makes for a great radio voice. It does. Mm, yeah. Actually, my radio voice got much better that's after I quit you, smoking. I do. I say? believe it. Well, you hear because it, it depends on the radio voice. Yeah, because yeah, well, I mine used to be so thick with mucus, and it's yep. not quite so thick with mucus in it all anymore. Not right. anymore. Not, not anymore. anymore. <laughs> but I love talking about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he would also he'd eat four meals a day. He constantly smoke cigarettes, but dinner was a five course meal that was made specifically for his and his wife's blood type. Reportedly, Miss Cavage's favorites were mushroom risotto, clam linguine, Ooh. and of course, the cruelest of meals, foie gras. Yes, mm. it is. It is sad, and I, even I struggle. With a, I, I, frog wah is delicious, but I think it must it's be the, so hard for you. It's the pain in it that is what's delicious. It's mm -hmm. the screaming of it. I can see him like having a little piece of frog wah, which is like it's half the size of his head. Yeah. yeah. Like just because he's all head. He is. He's all head. And so, yeah, you hear him like, that's a very David Miscavige meal. Very much so. Yeah, I could see it. Seafood would also be trucked in from Santa Monica to Gold Base several times a week, and corn fed lamb would be flown in from New Zealand. He must have been terrified attached to those planes. <laughs> yeah, lucky lamb. <laughs> David's missing wife, Shelly, would also make these extravagant delivery demands. Of course, this is before Shelly Miscavige went missing. Right. Shelly was, uh, it, I would say, from what I can tell, I may be wrong here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. But Shelly Miscavige also sounds like a monster. Complicated woman. <laughs> well, truly, complicated I mean, woman. I know she's missing. I know it's all that. But it does seem like, from what I've read, that she joined in the, well, in the torture I mean, quite so, a bit. Some place underneath makes a really good argument, which, which is interesting because it's a part of the actual legal argument that, that David Miscavige is going through right now of, like, can someone, if you're raised in a religion, mm -hmm. if you know nothing but, this religion, like from very, very early age, and it forms your entire personality. What is consent to activities that you have been kind of fully indoctrinated into believing that this is what you're supposed to do? Mm -hmm. You are, Shelly Miscavige knows as the number two to the number one of Scientology and the history of quote unquote number twos mm -hmm. and what happens to them within Scientology uh, was probably acting in a way to, yeah, probably maybe it, it gets inside of you, mm -hmm. but you're also trying to go along to get along. You're trying to not make bumps and you're trying to be the bride of David Miscavige. Sure. Who is just as, cr and like, you, you don't, don't think you can't get flushed down the toilet. Because people did view her as some, like, she was scary, but then the other echelons of her were like, the, the higher ups were like, well, Shelly was a, again, the term complicated comes up a lot mm -hmm. because. She was born, raised. Now you're you're in the center of the hurricane. Yeah, you know, like I don't know how you'd react. I don't know how you'd act. Mm -hmm. But then now, whatever go, it is, I'd go missing for like sixteen years. I mean, that's <laughs> what she, she got done to her. Yeah, you know. But so I think that you know she's you're you're stepping on. It's the pain rolling downhill. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, I see. Well, that's the thing is that her and David together, their meals would be, they would cost anywhere between three and $20,000 per week. Jesus Ooh, fucking Christ. Wow, that's a lot. More would be spent, of course, if a certain top gun was in attendance <laughs> at dinner. Well, they, I'm certain they didn't have goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no foie gras for him. <laughs> no, not at all. They'd fly in ingredients from all over the world when Top Gun showed up because they wanted to make it extravagant. They wanted yeah. to make him feel special. They have to show their biggest guy, hey, look at what we can accomplish. Look at what we can pull off. Seafood. <laughs> Holy hell. Yeah, seafood. Well, well uh, near the ocean. Holy wow. shit. Honestly, no. If it's going out to Gold Base, it's in the middle of the fucking desert. It's taking yeah. a three-hour trip from Santa Monica. So it's like they are mm. flying it in. They are doing the thing. They're shipping it's, it in. But it's three extremely, hours bad. It's very extravagant. Yeah. Sand trout. Can you imagine if there was fish in the desert? That's, cow that's cows. <laughs> 
<laughs> but once Miss Cabbage was done with his fourth meal of the day, he'd retire to his private screening room where he'd watch his favorite movies. He loved Scarface, of sure, course, because yeah. he's an asshole, yeah. and he loved The Godfather. We all do. Everyone loves The Godfather. Yeah, sure. He was also known to sip on surprisingly moderately priced scotch. Ooh. He liked Macallan, which is, you know, it's, it's good. It's good. Well, because it's, it's, it's good. It's moderately priced, though. Yeah, to me, honestly, then you're fighting. I mean, are we, how much are we paying for the scotch? Yeah, how much how do you have like, to pay for all it? All the scotch at some level tastes kind of the same. Now right. I'm drunk. <laughs> and I'm scotch drunk, which means I'm like making like world decisions in my head. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like looking out and being like, one day all this land will be mine. It scotch is an ambitious drunk. It is. It yeah. is. Well, yeah. it's a cruel. You get inside. <laughs> gets inside of you. You become president for a night alone in a room. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, McAllen, it's a good. It's still top shelf. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's I would just, stuff. I would just, it, it, considering his extravagant habits, I would expect him to drink something much more expensive. The Glenn Livet. That's the same. <laughs> yep, same, well, the same. Yeah. Johnny Walker Blue every night, perhaps. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a blue guy. Yeah. It's very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I tried yeah. to shoot it one time in you celebration and almost threw up. Yeah, that's how we are supposed to do no, it. No, you're yeah. supposed to sip it. Yeah. It's real smoky. <laughs> yeah, it's real smoky. Oh. But that's what, the reason why I kind of bring it up is that his stereo system is incredible. He'd sit there and listen on a $150,000 stereo system just listening to Michael Jackson all you're day, innocent, all Michael. night. You're innocent, Michael. <laughs> Every time he's just listening to it again, just loving it. Just yeah. like Dan wow. moonwalking alone in his sad, like empty giant mansion. Mm -hmm. So he listened well, drunk on McAllen to Man in the Mirror while watching Scarface unironically. Yeah. yeah. All this unironically. Wow. Yeah. It, it informs you. Sad. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as Miscavige's dapper look goes, his clothes were all tailored by the same guy who does Will Smith's and a certain Top Gun's wardrobe. Oh. And those clothes were kept for David's perusal in a room that was only for David's tiny suits. You can fit a lot more. You can fit a lot of suits in that room. This is one of those things. I, I'm yeah. starting to get jealous because I love my own tiny suit room. Because yeah. that's fun to do. You go and you're like, these are my suits. Like, just so excited to be like, and there's one suit. There's my blue one. There's it's my gray one. There's my brown one. Like, okay. And it's like, I just try them on all the time. Isn't he always in the same color suit? Basically. It's like a yeah. dark blue suit. Yeah, there, it's all he wears. there's different shades. I saw like one was like, I, I saw one that was more like a skyscraper cobalt. And oh, I saw okay. another one that was like a goose gander gray. Okay. I see okay. like, yeah, there's a lot in there. It's like, there's variations. Multiple no. suits. He also had two full-time stewards who did his laundry and cleaning constantly to the point where even the light bulbs were polished once a month. You're going to want the, clean light bulbs. Mark Headley talks about a story. It's just all of this, like, it's inanity to prove of its. It's like, it's inanity for its its own inanity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, What's you this are. inanity word? Inanity. Inanity. <laughs> well, it's the idea of, like, kind of, it's busy work that a yeah. bunch of people are just doing all the time because. Right. It's, again, pointless sh it's pointless shit that kind of drives you a little crazy. The, the whole right. point is, so, and, and it's demeaning. It's deeply like Mark Headley talks about how like when he first met David Miscavige, it happened on accident. He was a kid. David Miscavige made a like a surprise visit to their org, like him and his two dudes. And he accidentally ran into him outside. He saw David Miscavige. He was like, and the first thing he said, he was like this minuscule yelling man with two men flanking him. Right. And he was talking to somebody, be like, I'll see you at goal base. Like he did something weird shit. And then he said hello to David Miscavige, who like regarded him. He walked up to his new auditing coach that was like, oh, you know, like, and he's just like, yeah, actually, uh, I think the COB's here. Like, wh wh however they called him at the time. COB, he's, chairman of the board. Yeah, they called oh, him COB. Oh, okay. And, like, they, like, I think he, top. And they pulled him into, <laughs> yes, yes. B-O-R-E-D. That's oh. from Norm MacDonald. Yeah. <laughs> and so they poured him into, uh, pulled him into another room. And they're like, how'd you meet Mr. Wh when did you see Mr. Miscavige? And he's like. Oh, you know, I just bumped him to him outside. You're like, you need to fucking tell us when you run into him. We need to go into full panic mode now. They they clean the entire org, waiting for him outside. He comes in. They're all scurrying around. He comes in. He does the white glove. He has a white glove oh on. Oh, my God. And he's checking shit. And he's like, he's just like, this place is filthy because they found dust behind a trash can. God. And they made him redo the whole thing. They had to stay there all night. Was he a part of the fucking restaurant? And this is young. <laughs> this is when he's young. But the idea is it's it's that weird thing of like, it's that it's about absolute control. Yeah. He really should have just been an inspector for restaurants. Yeah. That would have yeah, yeah. been a perfect job but for him. Unfortunately, he doesn't take bribes. So it'd be very oh. difficult for him in that business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a lot of C's around mm. New York City. But when it came time to leave. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple yeah. of D's too. <laughs> a couple of double D's. 
Uh, I haven't jerked off in a month. <laughs> you should. I know. You really need to. I, I could know. smell cum, but not like stained cum. Uh-huh. I smell fresh cum. <laughs> it's just like coming out of you. Yeah. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah, it's like when someone's carrying around like a bucket of fresh milk. <laughs> like, yeah. that's. I can smell it's unpasteurized. It's well, wafting. I smell every, your children. Every time you think about it, then Jerry jumps on the bed and I'm like, I'm not going to. Yeah, I've been dealing with that recently. Natalie's been out of town. We're in a deep sidebar here, but it was like, yeah. Yeah. I was in the middle no. of like, two things like, when he was like trying to like cuddle, I was like, just leave me that. You're a fuck. I had to go upstairs. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Brings yeah. you out of it. Yeah, it really does. Yep. Yeah. Well, when it came. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Georgie. Georgie's in the room. I'm George, sorry. You George, no, she's fine. That's why I'm not mentioning it because my little girl's right here. Yeah, and she's yes. just like, yeah. things I've seen. <laughs> things I've seen them do. Oh, she's got her sweet ears on right now. Live from your grave. Stamps.com has postage rates you literally can't find anywhere else, like up to 84% off USPS and UPS. It used to cost five barrels of wine to send one single mare from one county to another. Can you even believe this? For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. And if you sell products online, I know I do because my words are products. Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Use stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer, and they even send you a free scale. But they don't send you a mailman because now you're the mailman. And guess what? I can be as drunk as I want when I deliver the mail. Set your business up for success. When you started with stamps.com today, sign up with promo code LEFT for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code LEFT. When it came time to leave Gold Base, David would hop on his private jet, which cost $30,000 per trip. Whoa. And Toe was a personal chiropractor to align his little back and a personal hairdresser who kept his hard as nails quaff high and square at all times. Good. He's got some kind of, uh, he must have some kind of hair implants too. It's real yeah. thick. He's got a yeah. real strong front. Yeah. Right. Additionally, Miss Cavich would also bring photography equipment and a staff to take photos everywhere he went. And then he'd take those photos, bring them back to Gold Base, and show them off to all of the executives and the Sea Org members who were, for all intents and purposes, captives at Gold Base. How exciting. So he just showed other people pictures of His himself headshots. on yep. a plane. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of Sea Org, even though it was once a position of honor in Scientology, they now seem to be and have been for many decades little more than slaves. Because they were supposed to be the priest class. Yeah. Right. And then what they did was in a weird way, it feels like a a truly abusive relationship where it's like, oh, you love me so much. I'm going to fucking stick your head in the ground. I'm going to just fucking mash your head. I'm going to destroy you. Right. Because because you love me so much. Mm -hmm. They are the entry point Sea Org in which Scientology becomes a serious cult of belief and subjugation. That's when it goes beyond a money-making scheme designed to build clueless and desperate actors. That's just American. (laughs) Yeah, that's just called Hollywood. (laughs) Yeah. Now, at Gold Base, where Sea Org members are arguably treated the worst, they're made to eat in a meat and potatoes mess hall with a meager salad bar, unless you're being punished, of course. If you're being punished, Rice and boiled beans. Yeah, they just think, got a pot. So remember, so that's what they ate. That's what you, after eating frog gras, a night of eating twenty thousand dollars worth of frog gras. Yeah, this is what they eat. Next door, the people who are doing the yeah. actual work are eating rice and boiled beans. What yeah. are we talking when we say salad bar here? Are we talking Wendy's salad bar? No, that got buddy. some chips no, and no, some nacho no, cheese. No, no, there are barely any fixes. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. like I'm thinking I'd like love a good salad sh- bar. Shitty Pizza Hut salad bar, 1993. Unless oh, they're doing good. things different because so much information has leaked. Because yeah. Rinder just talks about like part of being on Sea Org is being hungry. Yeah. And the pride of being hungry. Yes. Because what that meant was that you're working too hard and you don't like you're 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 really digging in. It's the grind. You know, it's the same thing of people now that well, you know, just regular ass people if you're like, I fucking work ten hours today, bro. Like I'm grinding, I'm making it happen, I'm doing it. It's right. that very sick. Like well, that type of ab- addicted to it mentality. Mm-hmm. That seems similar to Um The way they true. kept them yeah. very, very. I mean, they all do. Very hungry. Does. Oh yeah, hungry is a, that. That is a key word for all cults. Yeah. All cults are always hungry. You never see a chubby th- name a chubby cult. 
<laughs> uh, oh, blubbers. Wow. There's there's the blubber boys. <laughs> and yeah, there's the, uh, the blubber yeah. boys. Yeah. Oh, the, I mean the Gertrude. I will gang. say anybody who's in charge of big dairy, <laughs> right? Yeah. They gotta be biggins. Right? That's they a cult. Be. That's yeah. Oh sure. Look yeah. at me. I'm stuck. Absolutely. <laughs> I need to reach out. <laughs> <laughs> My cholesterol big too. It's so I need big. to reach out. Your cholesterol is too. I big. need to get a fucking a deprogrammer for <laughs> geez. <laughs> well, the cost of each Sea Org meal, each person, they spend about 75 cents per person uh per meal on gold base when it came to Sea Org members. That's about half of what the state of California spends on prisoners per meal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Prisoners get about three bucks, three fifty. Well, it's a great day to be a prisoner in California. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Well, on average, Sea Org members are quote unquote paid fifty dollars a week. And that's only if they don't incur any fines for various withholds, overts, or general goofery. Yeah, definitely oh. not general goofery. You get mm. bumped for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And you don't want to meet Sergeant Fuckface. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> because that because is... your throat, your soft palate's going to be a mess. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> general goofery, come here. <laughs> uh, if you get that sort of punishment, you can get bumped down to as low as $13 a week. And that's if you're not actively racking up debt to Scientology. Well, the thing is, Jesus. you are racking up debt to Scientology no matter what, because if you want to bail on your billion dollar contract, one of the things they do, part of the ways they keep you in, is that then they send you a bill mm -hmm. for all of the free auditing that you got. And they say, oh, you signed up for this in these various contracts that we made you do while you were half asleep. We kind of semi forced you to do. Some of you are into this maybe at the beginning, but we kind of made you do this and you agreed to this. Mm -hmm. So they are charting it because they're giving you this is where they get their tax exempt status to this day and why they do it. It's because they house and feed these people. Mm -hmm. But due to the lack of regulation on looking at like how a church spends its money, they can do it is the the tiniest amount at the very little and then just say, oh, it's because they choose to live a monastic existence mm -hmm. instead of saying we're trying to create a free workforce. Yes. A billion year contract. But all of this is seen by Sea Org members as a reasonable reality. They have no access to computers. Their personal calls are monitored. All of their letters are inspected. Their bank records are monitored. And any semblance of pop culture is absent from their lives. See, that is what's aggravating. They're a science cult. I know it's not real science, mm -hmm. but you would think tech would be everywhere. Well, it should be. It's called Sea Org. In the ideal orgs, that's what he does. That's a part of his money-making scam is that he makes these, he blows out these old historical buildings with the highest of ends of tech and uh, fixtures, beautiful marble floors, like everything at the top of the line. And then they pump volunteer. They get people to then like go and raise money on this new absolutely top of the line property that they just did, which works for about a year. And then the whole thing falls off once they be like, they, they let it go. And then it just, this very fancy building that is just empty. It's so weird. I mean, the only tech they really use is the e-meter. That's the only yep. technology that they like, use. Yeah, machine. Yeah, because remember, it's a questionable it, tech. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but to the point of pop culture yes. being absent from their lives completely. When South Park did its groundbreaking Scientology episode, Trapped in the Closet, that probably did more damage to Scientology than anything before or since. It really cannot be overstated yeah. how devastating. That episode was because well, David Miscavige is now living in a world where all of your deepest secrets, all of your hidden material that allowed like because that really was, I think, the power they had over people was just like when you come into this, this very sacred environment, mm -hmm. if you come into this place, right, what you will see. Which you will get. No one else will get. David, it sounds like you have mesothelioma. <laughs> mesothelioma? Yeah, yeah, I think you have early onset mesothelioma. I physically can't get that because that means I brought that in. Okay. All right, and I'm clear. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, he brings people, and you want to be like entranced by the secret teachings, yeah. but now they're all out in the open. Everything's so, out in the so, open. So now David Miscavige is kind of like, that That power is gone, which is why then the punishment comes in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is that like, that was the point that you brought up uh, when we were on the phone a couple of days ago talking about this is that like all of a sudden Scientology, you have... Any 13-year-old in America that can say, Scientology's fucking stupid. Yeah, and it's right. a, it, Sci South Park tr like educated a group of 13-year-olds yeah. that Scientology was a cult, and it worked. Yeah, I mean, that's a, 
the overall plot to the show, I mean, it's very much of its time. You know, it's it's R. Kelly, it's Tom Cruise, it's John Travolta and all that. But the masterstroke of this episode was laying out the entire Xenu mythology, the basis of Scientological belief, into a minute and a half long animated sequence with the words, this is what Scientologists actually believe overlaid on top. They fucking, they destroyed the church in a minute and a half. And cut to uh, Mike Rinder doing his PR thing after when the Xeno thing first dropped and being like, that's patently ridiculous. Ridiculous! Like <laughs> the way he attacks it, and that way it also shows they 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 are they they stick into a point of view, and they just hold it that fringe point of view as hard right. as possible to keep them inside. Do you guys talk on the phone when you're in bed? <laughs> you're just like, oh Henry, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm curling the phone cord. <laughs> I don't know you if hang ghost- up. No, I don't even think Ghostface would even want to kill me. I don't think Ghostface would kill me. What is your favorite scary movie if he I'm asked you? I'm never gonna scream again <laughs> because I screamed at it yesterday. I love Demi Lovato. But even though David Miscavige was incredibly incensed about the South Park takedown, especially when the episode ended with Stan saying, I'm not scared of you, sue me, the people in Sea Org would not have understood it even if they had seen it. Depending on if they were born into Scientology, they would have no concept what South Park was. They wouldn't know why any of it was funny. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't know why people even watched you're it. You're just talking about like you're my parents. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. At the time, yeah. what is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, none of the references like R. Kelly's trapped in the closet. You remember that? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or the rumors about Travolta and Cruz's sexuality. None of that would have made any sense. Or it's it's more like it's not allowed to make sense. Yeah. I mean, you know? the, I mean, all they would do if they watched it, they would find it confusing and terrifying. Right. They would see it as an obvious offensive against Scientology from the outside world. Hell, they might even it look was. at it. Is. Yeah, it it's absolutely deeply is. suppressive. Yeah. I mean, they might even looked at Zeno, Zenu laughing and been scared by that because oh, Zenu yes. is a terrifying character. Oh, like, oh, that's what Zenu looks like. You're like, oh, shit. But <laughs> again, but then also like there probably is a little bit of that sacred thing. Of, like I've been told that this is sacred yeah. information, that this is deeply, deeply secret, that people would go insane if mm-hmm. they heard this information. And they do go insane. Mm-hmm. Getting mad at Scientology. They go like, <laughs> what are you, what? But yeah. it's like, that's what holds you in but keeps other people out. Mm-hmm. Now, to the point of David Miscavige's anger, one of the key differences between L. Ron Hubbard's Scientology and David Miscavige's Scientology is that under LRH, Scientology was all about the tech when it came to the ego stroke. <laughs> LRH got off on people loving and praising his ideas and methods, and he was so in love with psychological manipulation that he set off multiple time bombs within Scientology, like the 21 year return, mm-hmm. that were designed to fuck with people. Decades after his death. He really fucked himself, everybody over by creating no designated line, right? He, and he knew it. He knew it. He knew it. He knew it. Technically, a lot of people fight about like what he wanted because like there's the story that he wanted it to be run by a council. Mm -hmm. That he felt that no one person could ever bear the the actual responsibility. Oh, yeah. Of guiding Scientology into the future, but unlike LRH. Because mm-hmm. I mean, shoulders so narrow, <laughs> shoulders so narrow, yeah. you'd think they were broad. You know what I mean? Like, he just yeah. was, he's, he's, he's perfect. Man- it, it, yeah, if Miss Cavage is a pebble, uh, Hubbard, that's a mango. He's a mango. Oh. <laughs> wow, he is a mango. That's great. I'm old, a mango. Well, I'm a like, mango. I'm a, I consider myself an avocado. <laughs> you probably want to eat more mangoes with your blood pressure. Probably be good for you. <laughs> Where are my pamphlets? <laughs> Honestly, because we all that time we I gotta get these, gotta get these cooked up. It's great. You feeling good now? I feel no. much better. I actually I'm honestly feel deeply agitated. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. He wanted a council, huh? A council. He wanted a big council. Yes. Well, no way nine people could be wrong. Yeah, no way. I feel blessed. Thank you, Fernando. Fantastic. <laughs> and you're an avocado. Oh, you're a mango. Oh, thank God. Hey. (laughs) That's the thing. Hubbard loved the manipulation. He loved the tech. He loved people telling him how smart he was for for coming up with all of this shit. Miscavige, however, he's more of a sociopathic corporate CEO. Mm. He's very, very shallow. He thrives on fear, submission, and the blind accumulation of wealth. To that end, he completely restructured Scientology to specifically feed those needs. He is literally the only, him and TC, 
Mm-hmm. Well, our 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 blind uh, item, a certain Top Gun, a certain Top Gun, <laughs> yeah. are the only people currently really benefiting from Scientology. I mean, who knows with the parishioners? Mm-hmm. Like, who knows? Like the people that are truly just on the outside that are just casually giving money to Scientology. I don't know what their lives are like because we talk about how like the up to class five. Like the, some of the stuff is just kind of relaxation techniques and straight up acting exercises. Mm-hmm. Most of the stuff is kind of like innocuous. You can kind of see how it like it might help you with communication sure. or like with the, that, whatever, like that kind of garbage. It's yeah. not until you join the Sea Org that the crimes really start. This is one of those stories where we talked about, I think last time, about how the crimes of the cult really fall on its most beloved members mm-hmm. versus the other ones where it's the fringe gets fucked and the center is what benefits. This yeah. one, it's only one person benefits and yeah. David Miscat. It's like how we are with our friend groups. The closer friends we are, the worse it gets. Yeah. <laughs> well, in this though, I can see how some Scientology defectors can still believe in Scientology while also speaking out against the church itself. Yeah. Sure. Basically, they're like Catholics who left the church because of the molesting, but still pray to God when they're in a jam. Sure. And they still use guilt to simultaneously keep themselves from doing horrible things and to keep themselves from enjoying life to the fullest. Because that's the key. You want to hover between those two points. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. called Christianity. <laughs> I mean, you can take some of the positive tenets of anything yeah. and apply it to a secular life. Of course. Yeah. That's you know? the idea. Yeah. It's like, and then community. The yeah. concept of right. community. Of course. Yeah. But in Scientology, of course. That's how you become a squirrel. That's what a squirrel Uh-oh. is. That's somebody who's stealing who is, tech. Yes, someone who has taken the ideas of Scientology and is practicing them outside of the church. And that, of course, can bring the ire of the squirrel busters. Yes, oh, yeah. I've been indeed. trying to audit my blood pressure down, but all I end up doing is masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll raise it. But when it comes to Scientology being mainly about David Miscavige for the last few decades, his birthday is probably the best example. Ooh. Because I think that's a new holiday now. Because they have like five big holidays. One's LRH birthday. And they have like another, I forget the other one's like the beginning of OT8. And I guess it's one of his, is, is that one of the big holidays? Oh, it's definitely a big holiday. Yeah. And they're, they're big Arbor Day uh, people. <laughs> no, <laughs> Arbor. Big Arbor Day people, yeah. Well, every year, Scientologists celebrate David Miscavige's birth by giving cash contributions that go towards birthday presents for <gasps> little Davey. Wow, great. Over, over the years, he's received such expensive gifts as tailored suits, designer leather jackets, nice cameras, diving equipment, Italian shoes, and a handmade titanium bicycle. Cool. I would love to see this rich fucking bitch just open up the present. Yeah, we have a suit. <laughs> yeah, we have a Put it in my suit, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice. Oh, tan suit? You trying to get me sued? Get out of here. But those are only the appetizers for the big gifts presented by the various orgs. One year, the Flag Service Org in Clearwater all pitched in and bought David a $70,000 motorcycle. Money well spent. Nice. And another division set him up with a BMW. Cool. But Miss Cavage also ends up with more presents because in a classic corporate move, and this is actually very important to David Miscavige holding on to power for as long as he has, he created so many different orgs within orgs that nobody is able to hold enough power to challenge him for the top spot. It's a great way to do it. It's, it has been, it is so complicated and, uh, and it, you can see why you get obsessed yeah. researching Scientology. I am. I'm up to my fucking receding hairline in it. Right? God, like, God, God save Tony Ortega. I mean, he really just like the idea of keeping it up to date, but it is very difficult to really parse down what is the day to day of current Scientology and what's going on in there because yeah. of this like spider web construction that David Miscavige has set up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If you see the power chart flow, have you ever seen that power flow? No. Of, like, it's fun. It's just. Again, the the word inanity keeps coming up. It's just red tape. It's made just to make sure you know you'll never get your word all the way up to David Miscavige. Yeah. But perhaps Miscavige's greatest crime when it comes to sillying the legacy of LRH oh. was when he replaced Hubbard's adorable corgis <gasps> yes. with the lowly beagle. Oh, fuck. Now oh, we're going to get blown up. <laughs> we're going to get blown up even harder. I love beagles. They keep your house free of rodents. Do you understand that the beagle brigade is going to fucking be right behind I the goddamn beagles. Scientologists uh, yeah, in mean, front of our homes? Yeah, the beagle brigade is fine. Well, we'll just have to fucking come back with the corgi clan. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Marcus. <laughs> oh, yeah, a great. Corgi clan. <laughs> corgi clan with a C, my friend. Uh, with a C. Uh, Thank you for clarifying. Like the foot clan, but for corgi 
he's the Corgi That's Clown. That's just we as bad at, as what we were thinking earlier. We here at the Crazy Corgi Clan, we absolutely uh-huh. love a short leg animal. And anything with anything beyond a five inch leg needs to be genocide. Corgi butts drive me nuts. I don't like the Corgi community. I think that they sexualize their dogs. Oh my God, guys! Oh my God. I just—I'm so—I feel like <laughs> I'm a beagle we're gonna, boy. <laughs> we're gonna like jump past being sued by the Church of Scientology and just get sued by by dogs. <laughs> we're just gonna get sued by uh, the Beagle World, Beagle magazines. So. <laughs> Beagles are fine. They're just you know, uh, if I'm if I'm on a boat. What do I want to see? Do I want to see corgis or do I want to see beagles? I, see, I want to see a woman with big breasts and a bikini. <laughs> Fantastic. I want to see, I want to look and see a margarita in my hand. And I yeah. want to see, I want to have a fresh brat in the other. I mean, yes. Are corgis a less, are they a less a practical animal to have on a boat because they're so low and you can trip over them and go overboard much easier. Absolutely. Than Absolutely. Dogs should be on boats. <laughs> I don't think dogs like boats. No, I don't think. I think they're terrified on a boat. <laughs> I know some people are like, my dog loves the boat. It's because you raised them on the boat. On now the it's, boat. It loves you. It's a boat dog. <laughs> I also I just want a margarita and a fucking bride. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a nice day that would be. That really would be a nice day. I'm, I'm going to plan it. I'm going to do it Sunday. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Well, Miss Cabbage had, amongst a veritable pack of dogs, five beagles that all had blue vests custom made and each one featured four stripes on the shoulder epaulets. They had epaulets, they had everything. It was very cute. I will will admit, it's a cute costume. Yeah. That meant that the beagles, though, were technically Sea Org captains. (laughs) And as such, everyone had to treat them as Sea Org captains and salute them when they walked by. This was, of course, yet another tactic David Miscavige used to keep Sea Org members in their place. Jeez. Telling them, basically, even the highest ranking among you are, at best, equal to my fucking dogs. Seriously. And, wow. again, with, like, he says, again, the way they flip it, is that, like, oh, what, like, a funny, cute thing. Like, it's a human interest thing. But every single thing that David Miscavige does is deadly serious. Yeah. Right. There's not a sense of irony about the man. Like, and if you look at footage that people have of him now, like, those fake... Scientology videos where you see him like smiling and ha- like j- looking like he hangs out mm-hmm. with people inside of the org and shit. You're like, absolutely not. That man's very, very dangerous. No. Tell me you don't like a fucking beagle, bro. No, I like a beagle. I'm just saying. Beagle. I have no, pr- again, I have, don't have <laughs> a hair in this fight. I mean, I, I like a beagle. I'm just saying I got a corgi or I got a little corgi mix. And I like corgis better. Beagles can run up to 20 miles fucking per hour. Yeah, you fucking put that beagle up against my Georgie. Georgie can run 20 miles an hour. I guarantee you. I've seen this dog run. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> well, in addition, Miss Cavage also had a Dalmatian pit bull mix oh. called Buster, who was known to attack staff members and once sent an elderly woman to the hospital. Oh. Now, while Sea Org members were putting up with being compared to dogs and being attacked by dogs, they were also being beaten on the regular by Scientology executives. And the beatings were beginning to get progressively worse starting in the late 90s. That's because shit was rolling downhill following the death of Lisa McPherson. Remember, that's what we talked mm-hmm. about at the end of the last episode. That was their exorcism gone wrong. Yes. yes basically. And after that, David Miscavige's punishments involving Scientology executives were getting more violent, more humiliating, and more bizarre in the dusty old bones full of green dust tradition. It really mm. is true. And the fact that, like, because now they're, like, heavily bleeding. Mm-hmm. After the Lisa McPherson thing, that was, like, really the first time that something from the outside world really came in and touched yeah. David Miscavige. Right. And he did not like that, which is why they still so angrily and hungrily go after anybody. And they still are doing it. We're experiencing too. People experience this all the time because of because of the Lisa McPherson thing and where it's going to to now. Like mm-hmm. this is the whole like third age yeah. of Scientology. Mm. And, and this is, you know, and it's important to say that like these uh Punishments, the worst punishments in Scientology go towards executives. Oh, These yeah. are people at the very, very top, the people that are in David Miscavige's immediate orbit. Again, Shelly Miscavige, all these people, anybody who got close to him was this close. The more you got promoted, the more in danger you were within the mm. organization. Well, and perhaps the most bizarre and frankly hilarious example, David Miscavige had a set of expensive, lifelike ventriloquist dolls commissioned that looked exactly like his three favorite executive whipping boys. Mm -hmm. He would bring them into these meetings and Mm -hmm. then he'd be like, 
okay, everybody, let's just see what Mike has to say. <laughs> and he'd pull up the ventriloquist dummy and act it out in front of all of them. He'd ask the questions. And yeah. then he'd answer the questions in like voices that impersonated the Dolls Doppelganger. Oh, that's hilarious. Yes. Uh, but they were also very, the impersonations were also fucking weird. I know, because it was exactly, Cabbage. It was like my, it's my, that's a part of it I connected is that he's very like, He's brutal in this too, where they're not clever. No, they're just it's kind of Trumpy in that way, where it's just enough of like a gut shot because it's immature too. Yeah. And then you're supposed to be a big bad boss of Scientology right. too, mm-hmm. and he's just ripping you to shreds in the room. Yeah, but for one executive named Haber, oh or maybe yeah, it's the, a bear. It's a a bear Jetsch. It's the guy that was the original spokesperson for Scientology mm-hmm. because he looked like a cute old man. Mm-hmm. But then David Miscavige decided that he looked too old. And yeah. then when, that's when Rinder got put His up. His name is Aber Bench? Aber, Aber Jench. Aber Jench. I hope he finds them boys <laughs> out there. I hope he finds them, them boys. I'm, I'm thinking what? of the boys. Oh, I'm thinking of the boys. <laughs> what are you saying? They got a Confederate flag <laughs> in their car. No, he's German. Oh. He's Aber Jench. Yeah, I hope he finds them boys from the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Hey, man, whatever gets it out. Hey, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, man. Well, for this guy, David Miscavige would get a little meta. He'd do a howdy doody voice uh, that always answered with childish statements. Well, I'm because- a dummy. I'm a big stupid dummy. <laughs> like, literally. Yeah, because in Miscavige's view, uh, A Bear had the intelligence of a marionette. You're as smart as this dummy. You're a dummer. You look at the dummy. It's like, why are you friends with me then? <laughs> if he's, he hates all of his friends. He has no friends. Yeah. Like, only, only one specific, incredible cocktail artist. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> well, for another executive named Guillaume Le Sèvre, Miscavige would do an over-the-top French accent, <laughs> and almost every sentence that he spoke would mention how much Le Sèvre loved cheese. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, man. Like, I'm a cheese-loving motherfucker. <laughs> I am a stupid cocksucker. <laughs> man, because he, because then he loved his favorite word with cocksucker. Right. <laughs> but when it came time to impersonate Mike Render, Miscavige would speak like a real slow-talking Morris Oh because Ms. he did him hold him McNeely. <laughs> he would literally go like, "Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm always slow to react because oh I'm out ethics and I pull it in, don't I?" I and the whole time, him. like, imagine there's like the clattering of the ventriloquist dummy mouth, like, right. <laughs> wow. And in fact, Miscavige once described Rinder in front of a large group of high-ranking Scientologists as being the spawn of an R-worded sloth's DNA. Whoa, oh, hey, no, whoa, whoa. <laughs> these, these R-worded sloths need to be able to reproduce. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but you remember, this is how, we're, the way we're talking about this is the ramp up. Yeah. Because right? as after Lisa McPherson happened, this is when things started getting more and more cray. Because yeah. cray. obviously he's been slapping and beating people and crossbodying people this whole and time. forever, yeah. But now it's really starting to get fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got the blood on the hands. Rise from your grave. On Rinder's further humiliation, Miscavige tapped a gold base electrician to install four foot lengths of copper wire into the ground in front of a conference room. This, he said, would prevent Rinder's body thetans from jumping off and landing on Miscavige. Perfect. So this, it's the Scientological equivalent of bullying someone for having cooties. Well, this is what they wow. this is why he's punishing the executive staff, right? He's punishing the executive staff because they're not doing right. The yeah. reason why Scientology is getting all this heat is because you guys are all fucking up. Yeah. It's not because we're a corrupt organization. It's because you guys are all fucking up and you are keeping... Now it's splashing onto me. Yeah. When it came to everyone else, though, Miscavige's favorite blanket insult was pie face. Yeah, because people would fall asleep. Yeah. Or in some cases, according to Mike Rinder, you motherfucking pie-faced piece of dog shit. Mm. Whoa! Yeah. Someone was pie-faced in Miscavige's world when they stared at him in silence and terror when he asked a question with no possible right answer, which everyone, he did quite often. Oh, yeah, this idea. Because he, he, we'd give you a bunch of questions, and then everything would be wrong. Everything would be wrong. Whatever yeah. you said was wrong. Pie-faced was a face with no expression. So to drive his point home, he started bringing white paper plates and magic markers to meetings. And using his kindergarten arts and craft skills, David would draw approximations of smiley faces huh. on the plates. But he'd use a straight line instead of a grin for the mouth. It's an it, emoji. Yeah, it's blank, a yeah. blank expression. You can't it's, see it, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's an emoji. It sounds like at any time he might try to buy Twitter. <laughs> 
I'm surprised he hasn't yes. tried to do it yet. Yeah. Take him down a peg. That's right. Mm-hmm. He would then pass these little makeshift masks around and make every executive hold the plates in front of their faces while he spoke. Because in his words, he'd rather look at those pie faces instead of their actual pie faces. Well, now, who would want to look at a pie face anyway? I would actually had pie for face. Yeah, that would be very interesting <laughs> and also awesome. distressing. I feel like I'd cry. Mm-hmm. Even if they saw a man yeah. with an actual pie for a head, at first I would be like, <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh, cool. But the other part of me would be like, what else is real? Uh-huh. What else is real? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all going to start falling apart from there. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this holding of the pie face would sometimes go on for days at a time during any and all interactions the executives had with David Miscavige. So they had to carry around their fucking paper plates. And anytime they talked to David, boom. Put the pie face. You don't on. want to put that on there. I would be a tres leche pie. Oh, cute! But <laughs> oh, he, it's nice. he would grow bored of his punishments too, though. Yeah. Then he'd go to the next thing, and there'd be another new horrible thing. As and it's going to escalate. Mm-hmm. So this is all he thought about when he was drinking McCallan, listening to Michael Jackson, just filled with watching rage. Goodfellas. He, I guess that's the only consolation ever can have is that he doesn't have a happy day. No, like no, he's never. sitting in a lap of total luxury as a god amongst his people, and he is miserable. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Certain I mean, less than that, I guess. I mean, eventually his rage would subside, and usually executives learn that you could mollify David Miscavige by giving him what they called standing O's during his little speeches that he'd make throughout the day that were about God knows what. Ideal right. orgs, uh, how definitely OT9's coming, mm-hmm. all that horse shit just over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. How Scientology can change the world, so on and so forth. How it's- we are changing the world using a bunch of propaganda that isn't real, like a bunch of fake uh, concepts and like, you know, like we're going to meanwhile just buying real estate. Yeah. One time when the applause wasn't enough, Miss Cavage ordered other executives to throw Render, Hebert, and Lesevre into a near free Lake. Well, this is based off a real LRH punishment. One mm-hmm. of the ones that he did, but he did it as like, it was a punishment and a quote unquote thought exercise where he's like, I want to see if you all, like he was dealing with a bunch of people that were, that were not auditing correctly. And he's like, we're going to do a danger test. And he's going to put them all and they tied them all up and then pushed them over the edge of the boat. This is when he was on the oh. Apollo mm-hmm. and pushed him over the edge of the boat. And then they had to go fish him out. But he's like, and what did we learn? <laughs> to not jump off a boat. Don't right? jump off a boat. Don't <laughs> do it. we learn? Don't jump off the boat. Lesson learned. Yeah. Okay. But the thing about all this is that it was unsustainably chaotic. If you're going to run a punishment cult, then you got to have rules. And you definitely need terrifying locations of concentrated punishment. You need sweat boxes. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So in January of 2004, perhaps as a New Year's resolution, Miscavige began codifying Scientology punishments for four executives that were very yeah. loosely based on a policy letter written by LRH about how to deal with suppressive persons. So that is interesting. Not all New Year's resolutions have to be good. Oh, no. <laughs> this was like, how do I make people more miserable? I mm-hmm. love having a New Year's desecration. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's more what I do. I like bring. How do I bring the world down a peg? 2022, I was too nice to people. Yeah. 2023, let's be mean. I'm going to ump the Grinch. Yeah. See, in Hubbard's letter, he listed steps A, B, C, D, and E for dealing with SPs. But Miscavige used these steps to create the A to E room. <laughs> That's only <laughs> half of my first season of my show. I know. Well, uh, A to E. E's ha- e was halfway to M, huh? Where were y'all at E, huh? Where, where was like, the show? What was the word? E is for excellence. <laughs> Yes, that's for Murder Fist. Uh, so. Yes, that was for Murder Fist. Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. is for Excellent. energy drinks or something. <laughs> yeah. It mm. was a bad show. <laughs> but Ben Feldman's very charming. He is. And so is yeah. Kristen Milian. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so are you. Thank you. Yeah, really <laughs> you successful. Fucking, thank you for just some one person. <laughs> well, the nice thing is about this series, it's only going to help your career in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, this will be great. Well, the first subjects of the A to E room were, of course, Scientology executives because they'd all been declared suppressive people who were out to destroy Scientology from the inside because they weren't doing their jobs. Jesus, it's a lot. Going through the steps, these executives had to audit. They had to recant their supposed suppressive acts in detail or they had to make something up. They always were making something up. Yeah. Yeah. What are they even doing wrong? Nothing. They're working themselves to death. Yeah. They had to pay debts to Scientology commensurate to their misdeeds. And they had to redo all Scientology courses from the bottom up, regardless of their OT level. Oh, you got to do it all over again. I do a little bit of, I have a little bit of satisfaction in the fact that at least these guys were also the ones administering punishments to other people. Mm -hmm. But again, the term we keep saying, shit rolls downhill, is that then they were making everything worse for everybody below them. Yeah. Just seems horrible. 
But while the A to E room was psychologically grueling, it was nothing compared to the next phase of Scientology punishment. Amidst a slew of mocking comedy routines and bad press from the outside world, David Miscavige created The Hole. Ooh. Oh, that could be fun. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Honey, do you want to go to the newest restaurant called The Hole tonight? Yeah, I always <laughs> wanted to go to The Hole. Yeah. Do you think maybe I can sit in the bucket and they can put cold water on my head? Yeah, I think they can, <laughs> yeah. dear. Yeah. Just leave me there. Yeah, all right. Please right. leave me there. Yes, I'm sorry. Now, bad Scientology press doesn't really matter to insiders when it comes to fucking with their belief because those already ensconced in Scientology, they're conditioned to think that everyone outside of their bubble are so-called chaos merchants spreading oh. lies. Yes, dude, yes! Cool. Chaos merchants! Oh, we're prime examples of chaos merchants. We're CMs. Again, far too cool of a term. Yeah. It yeah. sounds like a fucking Iron Maiden song. It makes me want to do it. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing cooler than Iron Maiden. For the kids out there, they were a band. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is cool. It is cool. Yeah. They all get it. Yeah. Paris Hilton was wearing like an Iron Maiden shirt. That's stolen stolen She ballad. does not know one Iron Maiden song. Oh, don't don't get into that whole hole of though that you don't, don't know three. You don't know. You, you were named three bands. Name, <laughs> name, three three three, name three songs from the band. If I wear a band shirt, you should be able to name three songs from the band. It sometimes keeps me from buying a cool shirt. I do it all the time. I, I don't do it all the time. Just buy the shirt. Who gives no. a shit? No, Why? because no. then you get your you're no, no, you're a liar. No gatekeeping, my friend. No gatekeeping. I'm not gatekeeping. I'm you just can saying. Say, we can all say no gatekeeping all we want, but there's gates everywhere. <laughs> and there's that somebody keeping them. That is true. Bad press, however, did matter to David Miscavige personally. See, in my reading, Miscavige had turned Scientology into an extension of himself. So any attack against Scientology was a personal attack against David Miscavige. Yes. Wow. And like a childhood bully who gets beat at home, then takes it out on the kids at school, so too did David Miscavige take a particularly hard one-two punch from South Park and Rolling Stone in 2005 and 2006. Hmm. This was then transferred to those in his immediate circle, who in turn transferred it to everyone around them. Now, around the same time as a particularly negative article in Rolling Stone and about a year after the South Park episode, David Miscavige sort of lost it when it came to punishments. He was presumably convinced that everything was falling apart, not because Scientology is an impossible scam to run in the modern world, what with the internet and all, yep. but because the people around him must have betrayed him somehow, must either oh. either on purpose or through their incompetence. He's put himself in his own bubble, too, mm. you know? Oh, of yeah. Of course. But on the other hand, Miscavige might have also realized that the days of recruitment were over, so he'd better keep the ones he had using the only tactics he was capable of using. Fear, intimidation, and cruelty. Those are his only tool sets. And this was about the time period where they were selling to their own people, like, make sure you get your kids in, too. Yeah. Like, this was like that because, the, again, they couldn't, they weren't getting strangers anymore. They were just trying to be like, now that you're having kids, make sure we pull them into the ranch. We pull them all these, like, childhood education centers for Scientologist children. So it's like a black hole eating itself. Yeah. Yes. And that's all that there is. And so you got to keep it, got to get it strong. You got to get it strong. Him. Always. And so, Miscavige designated a punishment center on gold base in the Commodore's Messenger office office, which was labeled with a carved wooden sign that simply said, The Hole. It could at least have been called, like, Le Hole. Oh, that would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. Make it frail. Oh, yeah. and, so make, the, and give it, it us, like, a super cool metal sign. Like, yeah. give, it, say, give it something that has yeah. some edge to it, not a carved wooden sign. You yeah. have fallen into the hole. <laughs> like, that's yeah. sweet. But yeah, it's not a record shop. No. Absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately. Put the lotion on the skin or you get the, the bone again. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. That? No, you the don't hose, need to, the hose. The hose. We don't need, we don't need to know again. every reference. No. You know I mean, no. it's nice. Now, once you entered the building that became known as the hole, you would find that three out of the four doors to the building were obviously locked and barred shut. And the windows were screwed down so that they couldn't open more than two inches. There was also no air conditioning. Remember, this place existed in the California desert. Mm. But if the heat got too claustrophobic, there would be no escape because your fellow Scientologists would be posted outside the door at all times on guard duty. And by the way, those would also be lower ranking Scientologists than you. You're an executive. There's a Sea mm. Org teenager out there yeah. pushing you in the face and get the fuck back inside. There is this, there's wow. the added angle of that where there's a lot of, Rinder talks about that. A lot of times your direct supervisor, your auditor, 
would be a child, would be a 16 year old. Yeah. That would that's like scary, show up. Dude. And they're, because again, because 16 year olds don't understand, you know, they're, they're young. They don't know right. that like that they are, they're given this power. Yeah. And then they can just whack you with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also the hole, you had no idea how long you were going to be there. You're going to the hole. How long? As long as it takes. Well, he's already, because wow. honestly, at this point, Rinder and the uh, top executives are used to being bumped down at RPF and bumped back and forth doing stuff. But this was like, so when they, this whole thing first started happening, they're like, oh, you know, like it'll be anything like that. We'll go in and we'll, you, you go in, do your time, get out. But uh, it seemed like as soon as you got in the hole, it was extremely difficult to get out. Yeah. But part of the genius of the hole is that from what it seems, Miss Cavage again made an evil corporate masterstroke by making the hole an executive punishment. Oh. It's like you have an executive dining room or an executive bathroom. Cool. And this turns the whole, on a subconscious level, into a privilege. Yeah. You nice. are just high enough to be punished this hard. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> and so to inaugurate the whole, Ms. Cavage sentenced 40 executives, male and female both, to an indeterminate amount of time. In the whole, they ate leftovers from the already meager offerings from the main cafeteria, the 75-cent meals. And wow. they would not only get the 75-cent meals, they would get the leftover rice and boiled beans that was already somebody else's punishment. These are like, Ooh. these are people that at one point, yeah, these are the leaders of the troop. Yeah. Showers, like it was back on the Apollo during LRH's Sea Org days, they would last 30 seconds and they would only be allowed every few days. After they were done with the shower, they'd put on one of two dark blue shirts that they'd been issued, along with one of two pairs of teeny tiny shorts. Uh huh. And what's the point of this again? Again, it gets you out of. You have no personal. You have like you, we're taking away anything that is you. Yeah. yeah. We're taking it all away, and we're making you an autonomous, like little, like punishment bot in this room. So, like South Park made an episode, then Rolling Stone made an article, and now you're in the hole. Yes. Basically, that's exactly it. Yep. Okay. Now, ostensibly, the whole point of the whole was for the prisoners to come clean and confess to the crimes they were supposed to have committed against the church, LRH, most importantly, David himself. Oh. As such, the whole devolved into something very much like Synanon's game. After six mm. weeks, these executives have been reduced to sitting around a conference table accusing everyone of anything they might be guilty of, using whatever weird Scientology speak they might have at their disposal. You're out ethics. Yes. Wow, Wendy, we know for a fact you queefed. You <laughs> queefed around David, didn't you, Wendy? And you brought that queef in. And you brought that queef in, didn't you? And of course, when someone could get someone else to admit to something they may or may not have done, yep. really didn't matter if no. they did it or not, Right. they could show Miss Cavage that, hey, I'm on your side. I got them to admit to something. And the more that you show Miscavige that you're on his side, the less time you spend in the hole. Or you, th- or so you Ugh. think. Yeah. So you think, so you might figure you're, you, this is what you think might be. You're, like, you're, trying, to you're could... trying to figure out what the game is. Here. Yeah. Because every other yeah. like punishment has had like some kind of like structure where you're supposed to kind of like, because like how LRH used to work, do rundowns mm-hmm. and tech, David Miscavige is kind of using the punishments as his own version of Scientological lessons, where it's mm-hmm. all like, but it's more like, how do I figure out what David wants from me yeah. for this sequence to end? I can but also the see- whole he saw no end sequence. I can also see someone being like, David, I'm on your side 100 percent got all this stuff, and him just being like, pussy, you're a pussy. Yeah. The, the whole what happened, point is that they- you were supposed to stand up for yourself. Yeah. Ah! And <laughs> Crossbody. But that is literally that is right down the the, the pipe. Yeah, and you know I know Vince McMahon. He's no David Miscavige, uh, but that's what he would also do. Sometimes give people horrible gimmicks, horrible characters, and really you should have told me no. You should have told me no. And this is why they would say if you audition for WWE, never tell him you have a talent because he'll make you do it. And that Darren draws off. He was like, you can puke on command. Now you're puke. And now you're, <laughs> now every time you wrestle, you're gonna have to fake puke. Oh. So you gotta be very careful yes. with these kinds of people. You have to be careful who you the same. You have to be well, careful who you pretend to be because we are who we pretend to be. Mm. Shut, we all Kurt wear different Vonnegut. masks. Yeah, <laughs> Mother Night. Mother Night, do you remember Mother <laughs> Night? I Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> right. yeah. But I mean, Ben, the way you're talking, I mean, it is they are actually very similar. They're just both CEOs. That's all this is. This is all right. CEO. Horrible, like I mean, but manipulative '80s tactics. Like, like stand these up are, for yourself, as they're just beating you beating down. You stand up, up yeah. for yourself. Why are you hitting yourself? Yeah. Right. Well, the genesis for all this, though, it was not the game. At least as far as you know, accusing other people of bullshit went. 
The Genesis was an old L. Ron Hubbard trick from back when Scientology left only financial, emotional, and psychological scars. Yeah, the, the OG scars. Yeah. yeah. Hubbard's scattershot accusation tactic was called the murder routine. God, he was good at names, mm-hmm. man. I guess. Yeah. I just love, I, I love that kind of shit. Yeah. The All right. murder routine. Yeah. I just like that. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's the thing. It's again. That's uh, what gets you? Uh, it's fun. I love it. <laughs> like, it's just, it feels like, all right, it's time for the murder, murder routine. routine. <laughs> like, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, wow. you, could see the, you could see the sparkle in his eyes. Just like, it's called the murder <laughs> routine. As he's like selling it. And we're like, yeah. he just loved his little ideas. Yeah. Like, right. God, it caused so much damage. <laughs> it really did. Well, basically, if you're trying to get someone to confess to something and they're refusing to confess, you accuse them of doing something far worse than mm-hmm. what you're trying to get them to confess to. Oh, this is great. Yeah, it's, 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 it seems to work with certain political spheres really well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hubbard's example is that if you wanted to get someone to confess to cheating on their wife, you instead accuse them of murdering their wife. Got it. The idea is that if you called someone a murderer over and over and over again, they'd eventually say, hey, I might be a cheater, but I'm not a murderer. And it's like, oh, yeah. oh we got you. There's whoa, a whole... Whoa. They try to do it on the offensive in the Murdoch trial. We talked about this today, the, the, a couple days inside side, side stories, and they fucking got him. But they try to say, like, he shit his pants in the car. <laughs> like, he made this whole thing, imagine? like, how honest it was. You see... He shit his pants. He was, he, but would we tell you this mm-hmm. if he was a murderer? No, he's a sick. <laughs> yeah. He's a sick man. He's sick. Who amongst us has been shat our pant? Yeah, I it, only did the the one time, but I was at work. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't count. Although it does. It's I okay. was also at work. Yeah, I say well. shit on company time. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. On David Miscavige's Scientology, however, this stream of accusations got very aggressive very quickly. Hmm. The sessions soon devolved into fist fights and bizarre physical assaults, like what happened with Debbie Cook, the former head of FLAG. See, since hmm. Debbie Cook was a FLAG-based person, she was based in Clearwater down in Florida. She wasn't familiar with the strange world of gold base in okay. California. Like I said, everything is so completely oh, yeah. compartmentalized here. And FLAG's nice. Yeah. In terms of like, obviously you're working hard a lot of time. You're probably living in a shitty apartment and doing all that kind of stuff. You are in Clearwater, Florida. So it's yeah, got, it's, it's not a beautiful beach, but you're not allowed to go. But, yeah, but you're right next to Tampa Bay. Yeah, it's nice. It's you know? pretty t- town. <laughs> well, you got married over there. It's was very, beautiful. was very nice. Yeah. Like, they, go to OJ Simpson's favorite bar. I, it's anytime, all right there. Anytime Hulk Hogan. Yeah, his Saint favorite Petersburg. bar. Petersburg. Yeah. Who did, uh, who, Hulk Hogan, who threw hurricane parties outside of his own Clearwater bar because he was like, this hey, brother, these hurricanes are pussies, brother. Yep. And then he literally, like, threw, like, it was DJ Skrillex, oh. or Skrillex, DJ Skrillex, uh-huh. that held rave parties during an active hurricane where people were dying. Fantastic. Um, Florida's has got it made. Have fun with it. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Debbie Cook, she's coming from Clearwater, Florida. She's coming to Gold Base in California. And when she got to the hole, she didn't know the rules oh, of no. the game. Namely, she didn't know the most important rule, which was always agree with David. Oh, yeah. And oh. you know what you definitely don't do is you never laugh at David. No. That's a, that is a thing I've learned sometimes when you meet someone who's truly self-serious. I've had that. I was, oh, there yeah. was one job I did with the director... Like, I don't want to, like, it was really intense, but they were all like... Martin Scorsese. It was, it, yes. <laughs> was very mad. He did, he said something really, like, crazy. Like, I, like, was like, and I, I laughed. And someone grabbed me. He's like, don't laugh. Don't laugh at him. And it was just like, oh, I thought he was, like, joking. He's like, it's not. It's not joking. And it's like, David Miscavige was like that. Because, again, yeah. the pipe, these routines, he'd do these things. If you laugh, too, mm-hmm. he'd fucking flip out. Yeah. Well, he's, he's doing he's ventriloquism. It's he's funny. the only <laughs> one who's supposed to think it's funny. But I don't know if he thinks it's funny. I think he's a very deadly serious man. And yeah. if he's laughing, you are not in a good spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll actually get here in a bit to what makes David Miscavige laugh. Uh-oh. Well, Miscavige, with Debbie Cook, he tried to get her to say, for whatever reason, that two other Scientology executives, including the Frenchman we talked about earlier, he tried to get her to say that they told her that they were sucking each other's, quote unquote, sucking each other's cocks. They're sucking each other's cocks. Yeah. Oh. But it's not just that, like, oh, you do you not like it's that yeah. they told you that they were sucking each other's cocks. And you and I, held you withheld that. Yeah. And I need you to tell me that they told you that they sucked each other's cocks. Mm, yeah. Real slow, too. When you tell me <laughs> now, David Miscavige loved homophobic insults more than any other sort of insult. Yes. And one might say that 
he is oddly preoccupied with the said sucking of cocks Whoa. and the licking of balls huh. and so on and so forth. He really, Strange. really like was obsessed with it. Yeah. It, yeah. He might have wanted it. Yeah. It's like yeah. in uh, Trailer Park Boys. Uh, you know how Jim Leahy, every single insult <laughs> yeah. has to do with shit. Yeah. It's the same thing with David Miscavige and Dick and Balls. All right. Well, one time, for example, Mike Rinder got a text from David Miscavige that just said Y-S-C-O-H-B. It's just an acronym. And Rinder had to sit there and decipher it. And finally, after working on it, like it's a fucking end of Doctor Strange Love. He, and, uh, he thought it was like a secret <laughs> lesson. Yeah, after like he's sitting there, he's got a piece of paper out. He's trying to figure out what Y-S-C-O-H-B means. And finally, he translated it to you suck cocks on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. Oh. And then David Miscavige would go to use that at the end of every one of his emails to render from then on. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Yeah. It's kind of, again, I let it a little chuckle. Yeah. No, but I also funny. know that, yeah, but you're also like, guys, wow. Yeah. I love a random acronym. Yeah. I, I think, too. well, technically, what is it an acronym? Then it has to say, then it has to say a word. I yeah, think. it does. Yeah. Because yes, yeah, you scope. Yeah, it's just initials. Yeah, you scope. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not an acronym. You're right. Yep. You're correct. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Take it in, buddy. Victory lap. <laughs> I'm fucked. But when Debbie Cook was faced with this bizarre homophobia in the hole, she didn't know what she was supposed to do. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, they talk about each, st- sucking, sucking each other's cocks all the time. All right now. That's yeah. all they talk. It's not even that. That's all they do. It's all they talk about. They told oh. me about it, of course. Instead, she told the truth. She thinks, oh, no, that's weird. No, these guys don't suck cocks all the time. They didn't They say never that. said anything no. about that. They I never say anything about that because I, I know they don't suck cocks. Honestly, I feel like even just saying S and a C would like <laughs> register with me, you know, like because yeah. I've never really even heard two men aggressively talking like out loud about sucking each other's penises because mm-hmm. largely I feel like they do that at home. They love each other. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they need. don't need to yell it at each other. Sounds like someone who needs to be in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> but her saying, they never told me that, that contradicted what Miss Cavage was saying. Made Call him look like liar. a fool. Yeah. Call me a fucking liar. Mm-hmm. Therefore, mm. Miss Cavage transferred his ire from the two cocksuckers, so-called cocksuckers, to Debbie calling her a liar. You call me a liar. You're a fucking liar. Nah. I'm rubber. I'm the fucking rubber motherfucker. Whoa. You're the fucking glue fucking bitch. Mm-hmm. Whoa, anything you say sticks to me. Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> Sucking cocks on Hollywood Boulevard. I would. I mean, sure. And she was now the one who had transgressed. Now she was the one who needed to confess. Ms. So Cabbage, what? Well, Miss Cabbage said, it's obvious that you're lying and it's obvious that you're covering for these two cocksuckers. And therefore, if you're covering for these men who suck cocks, then you must also be gay as well because you're all in it together. You're a cabal. Mm-hmm. So she's a pussy licker. Yes. Yep. And so Miss Cavage let loose the rest of the executives who were all too eager to heap abuse on someone else. That was another feature of the whole is that once Miss Cavage gave yeah. everyone a target, everyone was relieved that it wasn't sure. then. You so know, they for, therefore they fucking go with the other person. But now I guess it all comes together when it comes to people like the Maverick um, or John Travolta. When it comes to them being gay, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, how, why Scientology truly did think that was so bad. And why oh, they're, they're like, deeply oh, homophobic. once you told me that, yeah. then we know we have something as opposed to like, who, no one cares. That yeah. was, yeah. The LRH was deeply homophobic. Okay. And David, yeah. because, you know, he, do he, uh, his, his son came out and he disavowed his son and yeah. all oh. that shit. And David Miscavige is right off the, I think that he actually ups it. He does. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely does. Okay. That's interesting. Well, as a result of all this, Debbie Cook was made to wear a sign around her neck that said lesbian, and they forced her to stand in a trash can. Was it Dick's last resort? Yeah, yeah. it is close. Yeah. And all the rest of the executives sat around hurling insults at her. They poured water on her head. Uh, but this wasn't the first. It's nor a the- fucking hate crime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this wasn't the first nor the last time something like this happened to an executive. But the executive soon began to realize that the only way out of the hole was to lie. Of course. But lie in just the right way. How? Ah, they just had to fucking uh, trial and error. Yep. But- Tur- turtles are fast. <laughs> it, <it's- laughs> Fish are dry. You're heading into 1984 territory, but that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Where you like, they, they, it's why there was a mass exodus right after this time period. Yeah. Because this is just stripping. Any single yeah. thing that you thought was legitimate about what you were doing there is currently being systematically ripped from you. Yeah. In the hole, because you realize like it's not about ethics. It's not about you going clear. It's not about the right. meter. It's like now we're just like, oh, now we're prisoners. Yeah. And mm. what LRH always realizes is that you got to keep them just confused enough 
Like you got to keep them just confused enough and to have them like, okay, I think I understand. But with yeah. David Miscavige, it's just pure well, confusion chaos, and terror and chaos. Benefits yeah. over the punishments. At some point, they do have to equalize. LRH kind of understood the, a little bit in, his, in, in terms of creating the a religion is that you must create things like what are we giving you mm -hmm. that is allowing you to take the negatives? Like yes. what are we providing that's good? Like and for a while, it like he was feeding people and they used to celebrate Christmas. Like New Christmas and New Year's Eve were Christmas. like huge times for Scientology. Game of Scavage stopped all that. He used wow. to do like, there were things that he used to kind of put mechanisms in place that made it kind of feel like a funny, kooky place to be a little bit. Yeah. But David Miscavige just eliminated all of the, the I mean, like, whatever fun that was there before, yep. whatever good was there before is like gone. So Which, the, and it was very little before. The Catholic Church, perhaps there was a situation with your priest as a child, but. Think about all the free wine. <laughs> yeah. That's what they, I mean, that is kind of what they, <laughs> they say. They give you bread, they give you some Spiritual counseling. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Lie from your grave. But the thing is that lying sometimes wasn't an option. And sometimes things went way too fucking far. Because every once in a while, David Miscavige would ratchet the psychological torture up to, I'd say, a seven. Okay. A seven or eight is about as high as, as, yeah. as, as he possibly could get. Yeah, like, what's ten? Rock Abu Tarot. Garib. <laughs> right? That's a 10. Right? That's yeah. a very top. Maybe yeah. Rock Terrio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a 10. Yeah. yeah. But in David Miscavige's case, his 7 was the infamous musical chairs game. Yeah, it's in the Going Clear documentary, yes. which is yeah. still great. Yeah, yeah watch that. Yeah. Let's revisit it one more time, just for those of you who haven't seen Going Clear. After gathering up his favorite punching bags, Miscavige told them all that they were going to play a game of musical chairs. They're going to use Bohemian Rhapsody as the song. Oh, fun. The last one left, he said, would be allowed to leave the hole. But true to form, this was not just about a reward for one person. Rather, it was about the psychological torture of them all. Miscavige told them that everyone who lost would almost immediately be separated from their families and shipped off to a far unknown destination. Meanwhile, all of their families had already been absolutely decimated. Mike yeah. Rinder's family was torn apart. I mean, he let it, but, you know, now Jesus. he knows. But his family was torn apart. He hadn't seen his kids for like a decade. Yeah. You know, he hadn't seen his parents. He hadn't, they were all in Scientology. And they, mm -hmm. they, so it's like, even that's an empty threat. Yeah. But to make it all the more concrete, Miscavige even rented moving trucks and parked them outside of the building. But of course, none of it was real. The threats were empty and nobody was told this until the game was over. Mm -hmm. But he did make everybody sit there and think about it. You are going. You are leaving. You are going to be sent somewhere even worse than this place right here. And you'll wow. never see your fucking family ever again. And it was really about David Miscavige's pleasure. That's what they said, is that he sat and looked on. He orchestrated this whole thing with a sort of glee. He's so, I'm just, I think he's a little psycho. I'm going to put the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the here as you can see, uh, uh, Mark Headley on his account, on his Blown for Good YouTube page, he put a bunch of listed nicknames he had in the Sea Orc for David Miscavige. And one of my favorite was Captain Dungy Miss Leadervich. And then there's <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Captain Fucktard. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Footbullet. Clam King. Chunky Head. Dainty Miss. Dainty Scabby Bitch. Oh, I actually really wow. like I like Dainty Scabby Bitch. And yeah, Dammy, Damage Mismanage. Yeah, Damage Mismanage is great. What was yeah. that first one? Dainty Bungled Dainty butt? Scabby Bitch. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, Chicken of the Board. Whoa. Whoa. Chicken of the Board. <laughs> nice. Now, even though the psychological torture was intense, there was also room to prove to David that you were loyal because more executives were arriving all the time. And of course, when they came in, they didn't know what the fuck was going on. At its peak, it's estimated the hole held 140 people. Dang, yeah. that's a big ass hole. Oh, yeah, man. And it was just, and it was, it started as trailers attached to each other. And then they right. moved it to this building. He just mm -hmm. made it this like fucking building. And it's this ramshackle piece of shit. Right. In they the middle a, of the desert. That's where the reenactment from, I believe that was my Scientology movie. Yes. It does that full reenactment, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Everyone suffered from a lack of sleep and nutrition. And everyone had to live in fear of the possibility that anyone could slap, punch, or kick them at any time. But there were also the far stranger physical punishments. One particularly weird punishment was when executives would be made to crawl around on the conference room floor on their hands and knees for hours at a time. 
This was industrial carpet. This isn't the nice shag carpet we have here at the studio. Humble brag. Thank you. <laughs> yes, this nice 1983 shag carpet that nice we have here. Thick. Ooh, nice and thick. Good yeah. in heat building. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's industrial carpet. It's horrible. Like, it's made to just be, it's made to fucking do whatever you want to on it. It's not right. made to be nice. But it would cover them in fucking in, in, uh, rug burns. Well, yeah. they're wearing shorts. So they're going around on their hands and knees, and it's not fatal, but it is excruciatingly painful. It sucks. Because they make them do it day after day. You do it all day long, and then before scabs could form on your knees, you had to do it again the next day. It fucking sucks. Yeah, Mike Rinder, it's, he said he still has scars on his knees from going through at least half a dozen rounds of this. Wow. And when it came to the abuse Rinder suffered, he seemed to be David Miscavige's favorite person to pile on. On possibly the worst day Rinder had, Marty Rathbun physically attacked him to try to get him to come clean. And Rathbun was particularly angry because he'd been thrown in the hole because he had failed to get Mike Rinder to come clean when he was on the outside. So he uh. got put in the hole to like, okay, you can't do it from the outside. You fucking go in the hole and you do it from in there. And Marty Rathbun's fucking scary too. He's another one that was yeah. the head. Like he's very fucking he's scary. But what do they want Rinder to say? To I fucked up. I'm, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Like I fucked there's up. There's nothing he could have said. Yeah, there's no. nothing. Yeah, because he was truly David Miscavige's like, he was the biggest target. Oh, wow. So Rathbun went in there. He sat on Rinder's chest. He put his hands around Rinder's throat and led a mob of Scientology executives in a chant that went, Come clean, render. Come clean, render. He even had his fucking wife joining in. Oh, that's Come what clean, destroyed. Render. That's to destroy their relationship. Was when he realized when his wife joined in, and he was like, "Oh shit, yeah. this is really like one for one. Like no one is backing up anybody." Yeah, mm -hmm. that's bad. But in one of his first moments of clarity, as Rathbun sat on his chest, Render whispered, "Marty, I don't want to play this game." Incredibly, Rathbun agreed and said, Me neither. They literally like had to go where they were like, curious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. David Miscavish from underneath them. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting there and was like, I don't want to play this fucking game anymore. And uh, like there was they both snapped out of it for just a second. Yeah, like I don't either. They realize it's like they've just been driven completely insane. Yeah. And it's why it's so difficult to come out of it because mm -hmm. of the things that you have done while inside of it. Right. It became somebody else's fucking attack dog over also, garbage, over absolute nothing. Literally, yeah. there's there's no substance to it. Yeah. Right. There's also something so juvenile about it. Yes. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah, we're yeah. All, they're all like 50. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's embarrassing. It's meaningless. Yeah. Well, Rathbun was let out of the hole a few days later, and despite the fact that he'd been in Miscavige's inner circle since the mid-80s... He was one of the scary big ones. He escaped Scientology for good. He just got on a motorcycle and, and left. Well, this is the Kinda thing, cool. too. Yeah. This is where, like, we'll get into the... When you get into the argument of, like, what's the difference between a cult and a religion? And I think that if you have to do things like one of the secretaries had to hide in the trunk of a delivery man's car right. to get out. The fact that Mark Headley, Mark Headley, when he left, he was run off the road by security officers and he right. was not saved until a police officer came and got him. Like, these are the things. Mike Rinder had to leave in the middle of the night mm -hmm. just with right. a cell phone, whatever was on his body, whatever files he could abscond with to at least prove something like at least say like hey there's something's happening inside of it without being noticed but yeah he's they, they had a run they mm -hmm. don't, i mean say what you want about the protestants but they don't want you no <laughs> no you know, so there's like most churches are just like you better fuck we'll, we'll kick you out right now they do you yeah yeah they want you to like yeah but that's feel like well, again what are we fighting for here yeah that's crazy well as far as other executives who got pushed too far an executive named tom devot around the same time snapped in the hole while the rest of the executives were attacking him. Tom screamed that Miss Cavett was an insane SP <gasps> and that they were all as nuts as oh, David. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, they did that. It's the worst thing he could possibly say. Yes. And while you'd think this would garner the worst punishment possible for Devot, he was instead taken out of the hole lest he start convincing others. He passed the test. <laughs> he did. <laughs> well, he probably got put wherever the hell it was he was supposed to go. A yeah, bad place. Yeah. Oh, bad okay. Place. Well, but the spell was broken. You know, you get one guy in there, like one right. guy starts screaming that he's an insane SP. You, he keeps saying it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So they took him out of there. They put him into RPF, which before the hole was the worst place you could go for Scientology. They also brought out Mike Rinder. They fucking, they had Mark Rinder guard him. And then ultimately, Mike Rinder failed to keep Devot in Scientology. But when Devot left, oh. Rinder began thinking, like, holy fuck, if Tom Devot can leave, 
Maybe I can leave too. I yeah, can you now see leave. those things that are right beneath you, your feet? I mean, <laughs> use them. It's really difficult because what if they do go all the way? What if I they know. like they got Mark Edley really could have been like, killed. Could have been right. killed by what they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not too long after, Brenda escaped in England and eventually got a hold of Tom DeVot. And Tom DeVot invited Render to stay with him in Kissimmee, Florida. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Kissimmee, <laughs> yeah. kiss of you. Oh, yes, Italian. Indeed, yes. Well, after Render convinced DeVot for sure that he wasn't a spy, he had to spend a couple of days saying like, no, 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 I'm out too. Yeah, you got to yeah. sweat box him. Yeah. DeVot told him to go to the local blockbuster and rent every movie that you haven't seen for the last 20 years. Wow, interesting. Yeah, because yeah. Scientologists aren't allowed to ingest pop culture. Well, anything all. that could possibly shake their belief system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. That ba- that uh, pool scene in Wild Things really showy. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I got interbulated. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, though, after gathering his thoughts, Render sent a letter to his wife asking her to escape too. I am out. Come join me. Bring the kids. Yeah. She quite literally told him to fuck off. Uh, and she added a PS in her letter telling him to fuck off uh, that she would send divorce paper soon and would, quote, brief the kids. Oh. By yeah. 2008, Rinder had gotten a job as a used car salesman at a Toyota dealership in Virginia, and he was living a relatively normal life. Now, of course, his ex-wife, brother, and children, they kept sending him letters telling him to kill himself, but using like Scientology language, they told him that he should, quote, check out of this game and go sit on a rock for a few million years. Yeah, man. Yeah, it does sound like space jazz, but it is Scientology's threats. Yeah, Yeah, she wants me to be a lizard. (laughs) They called him a, quote, overwhelmed, implanted, ev perp being. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, hey, whoa, wow. hey. Calm I didn't down, know we were getting this uh, Seriously, guys. honestly, I think Can a lot of those... we say this? We should, yeah, that should be bleak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they said that he was 95% in the American Psychiatric Association camp. Oh. Oddly, <sighs> when Scientologists make this APA accusation, they always say 95% and not 100, and no one knows why. It's because no one's 100% of anything. <laughs> I just that's what right. I would say. Nobody's 100% of anything. Yeah, 5% of you is probably cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly semen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But sometime later, Rinder discovered that Marty Rathbun had also escaped and was working as a reporter for a small local newspaper in South Texas. Huh. They both decided it was their duty to speak out against Scientology, and they've both been doing it ever since, even though Rinder claims that he's whistleblowing to, quote, save Hubbard's legacy. He's walked that back a little bit more now. Now that he's like way, way out, yeah. he's been way more talking about the, the what LRH was kind of a con man. And so, and so like, as I listened to the podcast, because mm-hmm. he did a podcast with Leah Remini, yeah. fair game, and it's like, and yeah. you can kind of see he really, it takes a minute. Yeah. Of course it does, They have man. the lessons leak out. Yeah, when he you... wrote his book, he was still like, Hubbard's legacy, man. Miss Cavage is evil, and that's what I'm down for. But yeah, yeah it's good to know. I mean, yeah. It's good to know that he's come out of it even further. He's trying it's to. It's tough, dude. It's You're very difficult. Mm-hmm. Crawling on your hands and knees, you choking bought out your long... buddies. And I mean... also, there is that weird psychosomatic effect of, for that some of the early training has. Like, mm-hmm. people do have breakthroughs on some of these things. But, but, you know, something has to happen to keep you, to at least get you there. Yeah. To begin with. Yeah. And remember, when people come out of those things, these, these sorts of fucking horrible situations, welcome them. With open welcome. arms. Yeah, welcome. welcome them. Like, make sure that they have a place to escape to. Otherwise, they're going to stay in and, and keep acting horribly. Understand when you take them to a, a you know, old country buffet, they're going to freak out they're when they see scream. a salad bar. They're going to be like, <laughs> beets, beets, <laughs> rice and beets. <laughs> no, that's, it's next to an enchilada. <laughs> so that's good. You would like those rice and beans. I can't eat a food that has food hidden within it. Because <laughs> I don't know what that inner food is. <laughs> it's a burrito. But while Rinder and Rathbun are the two highest ranking Scientology executives to speak out against Scientology, the most famous Scientologist in existence, yes. a certain tough gun, Uh-oh. he still has not addressed the many crimes his religion has committed. In fact, he seems to be more devout than ever. And it would be fair to say that David Miscavige was, at many points in his life, one of his best friends. Lucky guy. I guess so. I'm talking, of course. About the subject of today's blind eye. Who is uh, it? Oh, I who can't could see it, it be? I, I'm so going to be shocked. Tom Cruise! Yeah, oh, it's Tom Cruise! TC, baby. Now, Tom Cruise and David Miscavige actually have a lot in common. By the age of 25, 
Tom Cruise had already starred in Risky Business and Top Gun, making him a massive movie star. Likewise, David Miscavige was de facto leading Scientology by the age of 25. And the two men are only about two years apart in age. I wish that I could show you this picture. It's in a video of David Miscavige standing next to Tom Cruise. We joke about how Tom Cruise, like, towers over David Miscavige. But he kind of fucking does. Yeah, he's kind. Well, of, is look, he wearing the? Is he wearing the inner heel though? I he might have had his legs longened. <laughs> like I'm not certain. But if you, it's this really weird. Like it reminds me of the video. Do you remember when they they did the cell phone, the flip phone footage of Saddam Hussein getting hanged? Yeah, right uh, during that. I time. love that footage. I every night. <laughs> every it's the only day. way I sleep. Yeah, and so, but it's like footage like that. It's a hand put, and you see like. Tom, like, it's him, like, doing actor hands while everyone's applauding. They're standing up and applauding him in a room because it's the right. day after his big birthday party. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've, if you've never seen the birthday party on the free wins for Tom Cruise footage. Look that up because it's Tom Cruise doing the -da 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 -da. Ah, like he dances across yeah. the stage. Everybody dances. Sure. But you see they're all laughing. David Miscavige is at fucking his, like, shoulders wow. like he's at Tom Cruise's shoulders and you see the guy filming and stuff and then you see Diva Miscavige look right down the pipe at the cell phone camera and point at him and you see the camera just like zip that scary well to that point both men are short little hard bodies even <clears throat> though Tom Cruise is a bit m a taller of a short little hard body but both have naturally aggressive personalities they both have that east coast flair yeah yeah. Tom does his own like stunts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an East Coast guy. And you yeah. also, you do your own stunts as well. Yep. Yeah. Ah! 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 <laughs> and both men love cars, motorcycles, and extreme sports. Now, in the mid-80s, Miscavige had been on the lookout for the right celebrity to be the face of Scientology because John Travolta's star had begun to rapidly fade after a long string of critical flops. Mm -hmm. Sure, did Staying Alive do well at the box office? Yes. Okay. But it hasn't really held up well in the span of time. No. And yeah. the movie that he did with Olivia Newton-John right after, in which they were both angels. Yeah. And then the movie he did. The Boy in, in the Bubble. There was the boy, that, but that was before. That was when he was still on the way up. She's like the wind. Remember that song? <laughs> A you sing that music. song too? A lot, yeah. of music a lot of music. A lot of music today, yeah. But right around the time that Travolta was saying yes to all these stinkers, the Golden Boy entered Scientology through a woman named Mimi Rogers. Mm -hmm. Rogers, a born Scientologist, was Tom Cruise's first wife. Mm -hmm. Her parents had joined back when it was just about Dianetics, but they'd left during the late 70s when things got weird. At least when they were starting to like infiltrate the IRS. I'm stuff actually, like that. I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't go with like a Jean-Claude Van Damme. Jean-Claude like, Van Damme is very difficult to pin down. Yeah. Anybody that can split without having your balls like explode like <laughs> oh, that. Oh yeah. It's yeah. very different. He's very under control. Yeah. His perineum can stretch. Bro. I think, mm. yes. He was a very, and he's also, I think he was a very violent man. Mm. No, just in the movies. He's a mean. I actually don't know. I don't no. know. I have no idea. I don't know. Um, All right, but either way, he went with Cruz. You know what Tom Cruise's real name is? Tom uh, Thomas Mapother. I think it's Mapother. Ma <laughs> that sounds like a faker name than Tom Cruise. Hey, hey man, it, it's all about transformation, yeah. magical transformation. LRH understood it. it's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Mapother. I think yeah, it's it's like Thomas Mapother the fourth. Yeah. Yeah, it's family. No name. woman would fantasize about Thomas Mapother. You never seen the hips of a Thomas Mapother. You don't know. You don't <laughs> it's know. Tom Cruise. He could be the most fantastic dancer outside of Delaware. <laughs> now, I've seen him dance. <laughs> well, when Mimi's parents left, she stayed in, and she was quite the celebrity recruiter. She also brought in Sonny Bono. This is flirty fishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, though, it took a bit for Miss Cavage to actually hear that Tom Cruise was already in the church. Miss Cavage didn't bring him in. He didn't target him. He's just like, holy shit, the guy from fucking Risky Business is a Scientologist now? Wow. See, Mimi had brought Tom into the fold during the filming of Top Gun. Think about that the next time you watch Top Gun. Mm -hmm. And Tom Cruise actually credited Scientology with helping to cure his dyslexia. I think that he just found more people that will read him scripts. <laughs> <laughs> like, the idea of it, I don't know if it occurs. Like, I don't know, man. I love letters upside down. Yeah. And so, once Miss Cavage learned that's the not with dyslexia, <laughs> either, by the way. Oh There's shit! <laughs> uh, letters and numbers, uh, all right with me. <laughs> oh, vroom, vroom. I'm really not understanding dyslexia. <laughs> That's okay. Gross misunderstanding. Gross I ain't misunderstanding. no doctor. I'm a suppressive person. Uh -oh. I see. I see. And so, once Miss Cavage learned that Tom Cruise was a part of the church, he had Cruise brought to Gold Base. His top people were assigned to audit and supervise the man that Miss Cavage would one day affectionately refer to as TC. Oh. Tom was happy. David was happy. And Mimi was happy. Yeah. 
But then came Days of Thunder. Yeah, man. Days of Thunder, very popular. Didn't it he have was. the Mountain Dew car? No, man. But what happened was... Mellow like Yellow. Certain, Mellow Yellow Mellow car. Yellow. That's right. Yeah. No, it's when Australian beauty came walking in that life of his. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. he knew he needed to hop up on a little stool because he <laughs> needed to get up inside that head. Yep. <laughs> yep. Nicole Kidman. He saw a movie called Dead Calm. Mm. Saw Nicole Kidman. He said, that woman is going to be my next wife. And he just went into the TV screen and grabbed her. That's mm-hmm. what happens when you're a, a movie star. You actually can do that. Isn't yeah. that weird? Yeah. Well, he had enough star power by 1989 to say, go get Nicole Kidman. Put her in my next movie. Make her my love interest in this Room Room Car movie I'm about to be in. Yep. Wow. That's awesome. That's kind of hot. <laughs> right? <Car> mellow <laughs> yellow. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Seeing a Hollywood power couple as an obvious asset to Scientology, Miss Cavish decided that it would be better for everyone if TC and Mimi got a divorce yeah. so Tom could be free to pursue Nicole Kidman. Listen, there's one thing I know. It's how to love. Yeah. <laughs> and how to maintain a relationship, Tom. All right? Because Scientologists, obviously, what we do best here is fix marriages. Mm-hmm. And I think the first way to fix your marriage, right? fucking blow it up <laughs> right we just gotta get rid of this one because it's bad mm-hmm. so we need to revamp well seemingly to introduce difficulties Cruz was all of a sudden telling Mimi that he planned on returning to his original ambition becoming a monk him and Scorsese are very similar in the fact that he was very I, I, I wonder because I also was obsessed with being like a priest when I was a little boy too yeah there's something it's connected to acting. We know what it is with you want robes and power and <laughs> you all like this power, stuff. You like yeah, necklaces, garb, of, yeah, I love all that bones shit. of a saint I love in a merch, table. Yeah, I love yes. all that shit. But it's like you so you can see how like a super nerd like that, because that's really all monk is. Yeah. Right in a way. Yeah. Would you have a religious super nerd? Yeah. Well, because I did. you think that you're fucking you can do it, right? That you can you can touch the Godhead. And I feel like that's the type of quality that's perfect for a Scientologist. I yeah. did see a meme the other day and it asked Buddha. <laughs> It said, when you, no, this is true. I can't help asked, me. Do it you think that the they Buddha. Just, uh-huh. And it said, what did you learn when you meditated? And what Buddha said, I learned nothing. But what I lost, anger, frustration, <laughs> selfishness, <laughs> ego. Play the flutes. <laughs> so that's <laughs> what did you learn? God. But it's not what you learn, There's it's so what you much lose. Reading that we that's what you lose. It's oh not what you, God, that would, wouldn't it be what, it's not what you gain, it's what you lose. It's what Isn't you that, lose. We are better than memes. <laughs> memes memes are, are not the memes. only way we need to experience spiritual evolution. But aren't <laughs> memes fun? <laughs> yes. Thank Everything you. is fine. <laughs> and there's the dog and the house is on fire. I know the meme. <laughs> That's a meme. <laughs> well, it's a thing. Tom Cruise told his wife, hey, I'm becoming a monk. I got to be celibate to quote, maintain the purity of my instrument. Man, I gotta get I don't know about him, man. I gotta get my gunk out of my instrument. I <laughs> need to feel good. Uh, well, pretty soon. That's why you're an SP, buddy. I yeah. know. Yeah, too much gunk. Too much I, gunk. I, you mean oh, ooh, mm-hmm. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, pretty soon, Mimi was served divorce papers by Marty Rathbun. And after Cruz and Kidman got together, Miss Cavage began pressuring Cruz to convert Nicole Kidman. Oh, what a nightmare for her. She had probably had no idea that this was all. Well, it's almost like um one of those 80s movies where it was all a setup. And like the hot guy was supposed to date the ugly girl, but then he falls for her. Oh, yeah. And then he, she's like, this whole thing was a game. Yeah. He showed up on their honeymoon. Miss Cavage did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd kill him. I'd it's, kill him. It's weird. Like, because that's the thing. You always, I wonder so much, like, how much Tom Cruise lets, you know, how much of Scientology does he let his romantic conquest see prior to marriage? Well, again, he's the only one really experiencing 100% benefits from Scientology. Yeah. So he seems like, come look at this wonderful world yeah. where everybody does whatever I say. Yeah. And everybody's smiling and they're just so friendly and giving and it's such a cool community. David's so cool. Yeah, I mean he's great, I and mean, it's only, it's really just because you're you're being you're being treated so kind of yeah, well. Of you're being treated like a pharaoh. Yeah, and he also it seems like I know he definitely did this with Katie Holmes, and I think he might have done it with Nicole Kidman as well. He gets married real fucking fast. Yeah, right. like I think he it's old school. Yeah, I think he asked Katie Holmes to marry him like something like eight weeks after they started dating. They don't and, believe in uh, 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 sex out of wedlock. I believe Scientologists say that the the that. The whole point is that you're supposed to get married mm-hmm. oh. and like make some kind of child that then they scoop up and yeah. and train it's on like their own. Rosemary's baby. Yeah, it's weird. But yeah, he gets them in fast. Now, as we know, Kidman has always been, let's say, 
unenthusiastic about Scientology. Right. But that's not for lack of trying on the part of David Miscavige. In order to reel her in, he set up Tom and Nicole with a special bungalow at Gold Base with a private rose garden and gave them both anything they wanted, no matter how ridiculous. When they expressed a casual desire to play tennis, for example, Miss Cavage built them a tennis court. Full regulation, leveled ground for everything, top of the line, like Wimbledon style tennis court. Okay. Or built them a tennis court, had a tennis court built. Yeah, yeah he, he did. didn't do much. Yeah. He sent an email. Yeah. Yeah. When they said they wanted to run through a field of wildflowers together, he tasked the Gold Bay Sea Org members, the near slaves, if you'll remember, to transform the desert surrounding Gold Base into a garden of wildflowers. Okay. He said, go Great. literally do the impossible. Like yeah. when he told Mike Rinder to go get LRH, a posthumous Nobel Prize. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's, a go here's a straw. Go suck out the water from the ocean. Yeah, yeah. it failed. It was fucking stupid. So right. Miss Cavage found the nearest meadow, plowed it, and planted it with flowers. So... Tom and Nicole could realize the wildflower fantasy. Whoa. This is the crux of what, that's why we're even covering this end of the story, is that this is the real crux of what's going on at the heart of Scientology, is that yeah. every single time you see one of these ridiculous things being asked for, that's being done by people right. for free. Yeah. Mm. And they go and have to toil toil for hours. They're being forced to do these insane things. Right. And then the only people who see benefit are the people up top. And and then they're also then punished for it. It's both a punishment. It's like, here's a job that has a punishment attached to it. And then we're going to punish you on top of it because yeah. no matter what you do, it's going to be incorrect. Mm -hmm. And everybody around you is going to be moved and shifted to various departments because no matter what's going on, every single time they, any, they have any sort of event, he's about to fire everybody. But especially at this point, most of the time, they are organizing all of the shit that's going on outside of the hole from the hole. They're in the hole doing the things that he wants them to do, organizing these things mm -hmm. for the other people outside of it doing the free labor. Yeah. It does make, if anyone has seen the leaked footage of Howard Stern giving a company meeting, it does seem worse than that. Oh, very mm -hmm. much so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The and Pelican Brief. The famous <laughs> Pelican Brief. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing is that it's not like Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman are sitting there demanding this stuff. Like, build me a tennis court. Bill, right. it's, they're expressing casual desires. And David Miscavige is building a world for them. And th th they're probably not even quite aware that right. he's building this frictionless world. I mean, Nicole Kidman is seeing it. Yeah, Nicole Kidman's seeing it. But Tom Cruise is not... Uh, He's a very physical man. Well, I would not call him an intellectual. Actors, hmm, how do you put it? <laughs> you don't have to be the smartest guy in the world well, would you to say be it's a very actually, good actor. Would you say it's actually negative to have your I, own thoughts? I actually think yes. Yeah. I think that actually a lot of times you meet like, you know, John Travolta. Love him. Yeah. If yeah, if he's not really good with a complicated question. <laughs> Patrick Swayze is also one of those dudes, right? Again, R.I.P. Love him as a performer. He's got, no, got a lot going on. They talk about like Jimi Hendrix, about how like terrible yeah. interview. You know what I mean? Like they don't, these are, they're artists, so they don't have to be that great at, at maybe understanding a lot of things. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the thing. That's why I can't learn lines because my mind is already full of my own fucking so thoughts. So he's trying to say that he's great. too smart to no, be No, I'm not saying I'm yeah. too smart. I'm saying <laughs> that my it. thoughts are too out of control. Well, to be buddy, an actor. I, I mean, look actually, at, hey, first look of at all, De Johnny Depp, okay? <laughs> look at Johnny Depp, number one. Um, but also, we actually have some fantastic footage of you as tall as Joe. <laughs> and um, that was improv, my friend. Yeah, that's true art. There were no, and also, there I were actually, no lines in that fucking role besides grunts and screams. I'm tall as Joe, but I also <laughs> think that it was way yeah. more of an acting job. It was more of a dance performance. No, it was. Okay. Uh, that was, those were the lines. Those I'm are the only saying, noise. I'm told this joke. <laughs> no, I actually never said I'm told this joke. Yeah, I have I? that footage. Yep. Oh, huh. I'm yeah. waiting. I have more footage. <laughs> <laughs> we shot I, a lot that day. <laughs> yeah. It was a long day. Yeah. Now yes, that I remember. Indeed. Yeah. It ended with me being drug out of the door of 656 Metropolitan Avenue, covered in shaving. Yeah, cream. it was fun. <laughs> and blood. Yeah. And fake blood. Yeah. 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 Live from your grave. Now, seemingly... David Miscavige not only made Cruz's dreams come true, but he also made sure, as I said, that TC lived in a complication-free bubble built by Scientology. As Henry said, this cannot be stressed enough. It meant that it was built by Sea Org members who were all, who were, for all intents and purposes, captives. In right. some cases, in many cases, actually, they were teenagers. You're talking like 16, 17-year-old kids who are basically slave labor. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, when Cruz and Kidman's gold base bungalow was damaged by a mudslide, Sea Org members worked 16 hours a day to fix it. 
When Tom Cruise entrusted money to Scientology stockbrokers who quickly lost that money, those same stockbrokers had to pay back Cruz's losses with their own money. Now, that's a good hedge fund. Yeah, <laughs> I've ruined a couple of places with a mudslide myself. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> He's talking about diarrhea. Diarrhea. He's brave as Alec Murdoch. <laughs> oh, thank He's you. He's just brave as Wow. Him. Now, Cruz and Miscavige's relationship is interesting because it's unknown what side of himself Miscavige chooses to show to Tom Cruise. It's the fun side. It's right. the only time he smiles when yeah. in TC are hanging out. What we do know is that every effort is made to keep the punishment of Sea Org members out of Tom Cruise's purview. He's not getting tours of the hole, you know? Right. Oh, yeah, he might. I mean, as far as I know, I don't think he is. I think that they keep it fairly separate. He sees a very rosy version of it. Oh, but yeah. at some point, how much can you not? He's in the SB world. Yeah. So, but I mean, who knows? He might be truly. He's also very closed off, I bet. He's living yeah. on a compound. Well, he just also gets a completely different version. Yes. Yeah. But we do know that TC and Miss Kavich were close enough where David would visit movie sets. Oh, yeah. Imagine this fucking little psychopath coming onto a set. I mean, yeah. they had to do it with, I mean, uh, use Wolf of Wall Street as an example. They had to make sure that Jordan Belfort could not come to set. They mm -hmm. literally had to keep him off set because there was during the Goodfellas, right, like H Hank Hill, Henry Hill would show up. Right. And like say shit and became really rough. Like this. Yeah. So like, yeah, they can't. You shouldn't be there. Yet. Mm -mm. So a pretty funny interview with Ray Liotta the other day. He's on on RIP as well. As RIP, yeah. man. Chantix. Yeah. 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 He said he met Henry Hill and Henry Hill thanked him for portraying him such in such a nice way. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I was a fucking maniac. Yeah. <gasps> well, on the days of Thunder shoot. Miss Cavett showed up and TC took him skydiving. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. And Miss Cavett, he has some very real influences on TC's acting choices. Apparently, Tom Cruise modeled his character in A Few Good Men on David Miss Cavett. She plays a horrible person. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But, yes. but no, but righteous. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. And of course, but of course, you know. The little man uses that as a bragging point constantly. Oh, it is really funny because when they went into the making of uh, Battlefield Earth, so we know that David Miscavige went mm -hmm. full whole hog trying to get Battlefield Earth done, which has a seventy-five million dollar budget. Right? Like he got this together. <laughs> I want a bunch Not of movie. a penny wasted. It yeah. is. It's rough. They basically said most of it went to John Travolta's budget. They were, like they basically that's what they insinuated. But David Scavage obviously goes to the fucking the ropes, right? It's like Battlefield Earth is gonna be fucking huge. Everybody's gonna fucking love this. Right. Fucking cocksuckers. And then bombs. Yeah. At what point and is so, the movie so bad it becomes money laundering? It is. I, we, I don't know. I actually don't know. That's a very good question. But now you're T just talking the producers. Yeah, he's talking yeah. the producers. Yeah. Yeah. But TC calls up David. And they always like, let's have a meeting. And TC goes up to David Miscavige after the movie fucking bombs. Yeah. And he's just like, what the fuck, David? And he's like, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? He's like, this is Scientology's like movie production studio. I want nothing but hits. You yeah. got to be making hits if we're doing these things. Tom is correct on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so David Miscavige was like, I had nothing to do with that film. Mm -hmm. And then you know that that just like Tom Cruise got on his little motorcycle and David just jumped on that little back. Oh. Just like gripped with his little knees to his little like small, his back just grinding those little packets. 143 <laughs> pounds of pure mail. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yum, yum. Gruesome do some combined I mean, weight. I mean, the, the, the general feeling around the Scientology offices at the time is that it was actually so bad that it like briefly broke the spell of Scientology and like people were actually asking so around the offices like did nobody watch this thing before it went out? Yeah, like, is this not, yeah, are we not doing a quality check? Because I know I get punishment when I'm down stats. Yeah. And I don't think there's any yeah. more of a down stat than a $75 million budget movie making $3 million. I yeah. mean, say what you want about Christianity. They got some fucking hits, dude. They do. They do. Ten Commandments holds up. Yeah, Charlton Heston, I think he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Miscavige saw Tom Cruise as the entry point to access some of the most influential people in Hollywood. And if Miscavige could bring them on board, then it would be another big step towards public acceptance. For example, when Kidman and Cruise starred in Far and Away in 1992, they convinced director Ron Howard to have dinner with David Miscavige at Gold Base. Mm. It didn't take, as it also didn't take for co-star Cole Meany. Who was also tried to? They also tried to recruit him, Colmini, You know yes. the beloved Chief O'Brien, of course. And DJ Snyder. I don't know that, but no, yeah. I do know that. But um, you do know that, yeah, Chief O'Brien. Oh, Keiko. Oh, oh, the Kardashians. I'm just going the Kardashians are in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> Kardashians, <laughs> no Kardashians. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they got big necks. Attention, oh, Bajoran workers. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is where I'm lost. 
I don't know. But either way, they're not they're not getting uh, that director guy. They're not going to get him. Ron Howard? Yeah, they ain't going to get him. Oh, no. no. Ron Howard didn't want it. No. 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 Now, Cole Meany, many years later in like 2011, said that back then the only two places in Hollywood that you could network were Scientology and Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Oh, yeah. That makes it That's really hilarious. good. That makes a lot of fucking sense. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's one or the other. The Celebrity Center in, in L.A. was an old hotel. That turned into the spot where, and it used to be a place where you used to go with you can hang out, but yeah. now it's like now you have to hit a certain level to go to the celebrity center in LA mm -hmm. because the problem is that people kept sh people kept showing up hoping to bump into some celebrity and they'd have their uh, like their their scripts and shit, and then eventually oh. they're like, no, 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 this isn't for you noobs, this isn't for parishioners. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's that's a fun place to be. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, they didn't get Ron Howard, and likewise, Steven Spielberg was also courted when he was making Minority Report with Tom Cruise. Great movie. I mean, this is starting to really fuck with him, too, because more and more people are like, Tom Cruise, hey, listen, you're paid to promote movies. Yeah. Okay, you need to stop. To do it. And then there was, he listened mm -hmm. to the movie people. Yeah. Right. Spielberg also resisted, yeah. but Tom Cruise and David Miscavige, they figured that the only reason why Spielberg didn't join was because Spielberg's kids saw a psychiatrist. The only reason. Only yeah, reason. that's the only reason. So honestly, they're just looking for a good director. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they they're need just, one. They just don't want another bad They desperately need yeah. one. Do you yeah. have to be a Scientologist to direct a Scientologist movie? Yes. Uh, do well, not this Scientologist because Battlefield Earth. The guy who directed that was not, yeah. uh, and the guy who wrote the screenplay also wasn't a Scientologist. He was no. also wasn't a Scientologist. They actually prefer for anything that's permanent media. From what I have seen and read, they prefer you to not be a, oh, a Scientologist because then you can't protest if you leave later on. Like, hey, you can't use my image in that anymore, even though like. So I that's what I've heard. Would, okay, I figured yeah. they try to do that, do that from within. But. Scientologists are too busy to direct films. They're crawling <laughs> on the floor, beating each other up. Too busy. Yeah. Oh, okay. And from what I heard, like, you know, the people who do work for Scientology, it is just like, yeah, I'll just do whatever the fuck you want. Give me the paycheck. Because the yeah. paycheck is apparently pretty good. Yeah, oh yeah, they pay. Yeah. Okay. That's where they do those PIs. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Well, things about Steven Spielberg, you know, of course, no, he's not coming in. He's got a kid who sees a psychiatrist. So Miss yeah. Cavich directed a Scientology group to protest the facility where that psychiatrist worked. This was not a good move in Hollywood. No. Spielberg called up Tom Cruise and said, this is unappreciated and inappropriate. Which is like, that's a deep dressing down from a very proper man. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. the idea of that powerful man being like, this is inappropriate. Like, yeah. The unappreciated. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't so, appreciate it. And again, like Tom Cruise went and ripped Miss Cavage a new hole. <laughs> oh, and that's, that's, well, that was also one of Miss Gavage's favorite terms. Yeah, yeah new new assholes. Yeah, rip new assholes. Yeah, assholes, right. dicks. He balls. loves. He's yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, he's definitely got. Like, he would. I think he would like to like lick a dick. I think at the oh, very he least. least. I wish that he would get his penis licked once by Mike Rinder. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? Who knows what he and Tom have done? Who knows? But the love affair with Scientology actually sputtered out for Tom Cruise for much of the nineties. Partly because of that Time Magazine article we talked about last episode. Mm -hmm. Partly, of course, it was also David Miscavige's meddlings. And it was partly because of the influence of Nicole Kidman. See, Kidman had reached OT2 within a year of joining Scientology. Because it seems like the more influential and important a person is, the faster they progress along the bridge to total freedom. Yep. Weird. But after, I know, crazy, right? Wow. But after OT2, Kidman stopped taking courses. She was therefore privately considered a PTS a potential trouble source. This is the first step toward being declared an SP. <gasps> and it's likely that her lack of enthusiasm temporarily rubbed off on Tom Cruise. Yeah, because it's the love of life and his parents of his children and something mm, like that. Yeah. You'd think, yeah, you'd those think it would. You'd yeah. think it yeah. would, yeah. Now, Cruise did go to bat for Scientology here and there in the 90s, most notably in the murder of Lisa McPherson at the hands of Scientology officials. But he wasn't auditing much at all. And Miss Cavage lost his grip even further when Kidman and Cruz disappeared for a year while they filmed Eyes Wide Shut with Stanley Kubrick. Oh, my. They were all the way over in England. This was also during Cruz's brief cool period. It was when he also did Magnolia. Yeah, I mean, when he was really trying, he was really trying to act. Yeah, and he's period. incredible so in Magnolia. Yeah. He's so good at Magnolia. Oh. Very good. But, and fucking Eyes Wide Shut. Eyes Wide Shut's a great movie, too. Yeah, yeah I, Vanilla Sky, bleh. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Magnolia, fucking respect the cock. You know, so sure. on and so forth. Absolutely. Maybe got that from Miss Cavage. I honestly, it doesn't. <laughs> Actually, man. Wow. Whoa. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. But as Scientology does again and again, they caught Tom Cruise during a moment of vulnerability and grief when Kidman was rumored to have had 
a miscarriage. And of course, that means it was her fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when Marty Rathbun basically cornered Cruz and began auditing him again with Miss Cavage supervising. And of course, the more Cruz was audited, the more he was turned against Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Eventually, elements within Scientology also turned Kidman and Cruz's kids against Nicole Kidman. And by 2001, just a year or two after Cruz returned, that's all it took. Yeah. It did take 200 hours of auditing. But after all that, Jeez. Cruz and Kidman quite acrimoniously divorced. And since then, Cruz has never seemed to waver in his faith at all. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And he is completely out of it. He's he's back in. Uh, but there, in Mark Headley's podcast, he did a podcast and he talked about on his book. I was reading it in Blown for Good is that for a while he was a young man coming up in the Sea Org and Tom Cruise decided that he needed to get better at auditing. Right, he wanted to audit. He wanted to get back on the auditing training path. Right? He wanted to be audited. No, no he, he wanted, wanted to. He audit. wanted to audit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He wanted, so, he, like he's just a regular guy. You know, he just wants to be I'm, a I'm regular scientist. Yeah, he's just like you and, and I. And so <laughs> Marty Rathman went up to this kid and he was like, "Okay, so this is what's going to happen. So TC is looking to audit. He's going to audit you." I'd be like, "What? Is it, this is what he's saying." He's 16 like, "Sixteen year old kid. Sixteen year old kid." And he's like, "So this is the thing. He's going to audit you. The only people who are going to fucking know about this." is you, TC, and me. No one else is going to know that you're doing this, right? So they go to uh -huh. what is the LRH's private music room on Gold Base. When they go to, because TC can't go to the regular auditing room because it causes a flurry. Everybody runs around, right? It's too much for him. He has to go, to go play super pri private, yeah. which was this performance room where LRH used to play his, I think he played the clarinet, a couple of things where you do something. <laughs> so Jazz clarinet. Yeah, he's he's like, so fucking fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was styled like a medieval dining hall with giant, like, uh, with armor, full plate armor, like a standing, it was like eight sets of armor, a big long table, the big long back chairs, and they would audit in there. And the thing was that the like, first time, the, fuck, the first time they went to audit, he, the kid, Mark Headley, fell asleep in front of TC, which is the number one crime because it means that you're not paying attention. You're not like logged in. But yeah. because it's Tom Cruise, he's still Tom Cruise. So he's like, it's okay, buddy. Buddy, we're going to get through this, buddy. We're going to work on this. And he was like, oh, what we got to do is you need sleep. So, and unlike everybody else who gets punished, they went to Mark Headley and they're like, you need to sleep. From now on, we're taking you off your night job. You're going to go back to, you're going to sleep because you need to be well rested to be audited by Tom Cruise. So like they went, they, they rehabilitated him. And then finally, you have to attain a condition, a, a, a useful condition to be, be able to be audited. So uh -huh. you get sec check to see if you're a traitor first. Then they How check the your condition, e-meters and yelling at you. Uh -huh. right? And then they check your condition and they found that he was in this bad condition. And yeah, Tom they Cruise. Said, they said his uh, cholesterol was 170 over 120. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, please, please. no it's fine. I don't need him right now. I'm not ag agitated. No, you're not. Um, but Tom Cruise like went, he was like, all right, you can't, we can't get you in the right. He couldn't get up to the thing that he needed to be. I don't know how they administer okay. the condition. It's another e-meter test. And Tom Cruise is like, you know what to fix you? Was set me straight when I was having these problems? We got to get you some bee pollen. You got to eat the bee pollen. Bee pollen? Yeah, yeah, it's just weird supplement shit. And so Mark Headley's like, okay, now this is the biggest secret inside of Scientology right now. Bee at pollen. all. No, that they, that Tom Cruise is auditing anybody. That oh, okay. anybody would be able to be worthy to be audited by Tom Cruise, right? Well, now they're just sending him a training boy. So Tom Cruise is like, let's go down to town. We'll figure this out. And so they hop on Tom Cruise's motorcycle. Mark Headley uh, grip into his back. Tom Cruise zips him down to town where he goes to buy B Paul. And meanwhile, like all of these, this crowd shows up because fucking Tom Cruise yeah, right. with this weird child on his <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah. And it's just this strange scene where he has to go by, buy him B Paul. And then he takes the B Paul and then magically it works. And now they're wow. auditing for a couple of sessions. Well, mm -hmm. fantastic. All yeah. right. No, it's fucking, it's bizarre. This is what happens. Very, Very different worlds, though. Yeah. Yes. Well, when Tom Cruise came back into Scientology, he allowed Scientology to direct every aspect of his personal life and a fair amount of his professional life, hmm. much to his own detriment. See, in 2003, this is why this might answer some questions of why Tom Cruise kind of went a little wacky in the 2000s. This was two years after Cruise's return to the fold. Miss Cavage convinced Tom Cruise to fire his longtime publicist, Pat Kingsley. Oh. Kingsley had very wisely advised Cruise to lay off talking about Scientology in public at all. Just a bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool it. Yeah. But she was replaced by Tom Cruise's sister, an ardent Scientologist. Oh. So within like a year, maybe two, 
Tom Cruise is all of a sudden jumping on Oprah's couch, right. screaming about how much he's in love with Katie Holmes. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. having confrontations with Matt Lauer. He's calling psychiatry a pseudoscience. He's attacking Brooke Shields oh, yeah, for, for, having, take, for taking medication for postpartum depression. Right. He's being a massive asshole. Yeah. And as such, Tom Cruise wasn't quite proving to be the key to the inner sanctum that Miss Cavage hoped he'd be. Mm. For years, Cruise probed the edges of power. It wasn't just Hollywood he was trying to get into. He was trying to get into politics. He met with Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah. But not when Bill Clinton was president. He's probing. Probing. He probing. Met, he met with uh, Scooter Libby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, I yeah. love a professional named Scooter. Yeah. Love Vice President Scooter. Chief, Vice President Chief of Staff to Dick Cheney. But Scooter was as far as Tom Cruise could get. He couldn't get to Dick Cheney. What, Tom? Tom couldn't get to Dick Cheney? Tom couldn't get to Cheney. Dick. Dick Cheney's got bigger plants. I guess so. The closest Tom Cruise came to actually affecting change was when he almost convinced Secretary of Education Ron Page to include LRH's study tech in No Child Left Behind. <laughs> uh, that would have been something. It, it is interesting. It that wouldn't have been made the a fucking difference one way or another. No, but it would have been <laughs> an actual bragging ring. Yeah. It would have been yeah. where all the rest of it's just fantasy. Mm -hmm. Right. Cruz also missed a lot of opportunities with celebrities. He failed to bring in Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith on a permanent basis. He failed to bring in Victoria or David Beckham, even though Miss Cavish actually had a full-size football pitch built at gold base as a lure yep. in the desert. Yeah, just done by, again, Jesus. just by 16-year-old hands, essentially. Yeah. And similarly, Cruz was also unsuccessful in getting low-key Scientologists like Beck to go public. Hmm. But as far as Tom Cruise went, around the time that Beck married into a powerful Scientology family, around 2004, right around the time that his music went mediocre, now that I think about it. Oh, wow. What a gig. shot. Fire. <laughs> no kidding. Marcus is really going Ooh. in. He's been a real SP. <laughs> Scientology was, of course, working as, you know, for lack of a better term, they were working as Tom Cruise's wife pimp. Oh, whoa. Oh. Yeah. I remember when I met my, my wife pimp. Because that, that was yeah. honestly, it was a game changer. And you were like, yeah. wasn't she great? Yeah. No, no, she was wonderful. Yeah. I, I, you know, yep. cheap, 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 cheap. It's cheap, a new, cheap, it's cheap, a new cheap, show. Cheap. It's right after Milf Manor. <laughs> yeah, wife pimp. Yeah, right? wife pimp. You're going to love it. Live from your grave. After things didn't work out with Penelope Cruz following the relationship they started on the set of Vanilla Sky, Penelope Cruz oh. did try on Scientology for a bit, mm -hmm. for like a year or so, She's maybe a little cool. bit less. She She's was way too yeah. cool, yeah. Well, TC, he ran through a series of young Scientologist ladies groomed especially to be with Tom Cruise. So weird. The first was a 19-year-old who'd been born into the church, but she was turned away after about a month. Tom didn't like her. Okay. The other was a 25-year-old OT5 named Nazanin Boniati. She was also, I think, in Go and Clear. Yeah. She was forced to break up with her boyfriend so Tom Cruise could try her on, for lack of a better term. Oh, awesome. Boniati was run through the ringer at Gold Base during a hellish two-week-long audition of sorts, where she was forced to have what I'm sure were exhausting dinners with Cruise and the Miscavages every night. I just oh, gotta say, Nazanians? What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just ask you this question. You're here, obviously, you're here as a part of, like, you're at dinner, and it's like, you're liking a salad. I'm enjoying it. Wrong answer. I made it to be bad. Okay, the but seafood now, was yeah, good. Yeah, seafood and eat it. That's a funny <laughs> thing that we say here. <laughs> Don't eat the seafood either. That's for me. Um, <laughs> um, let me just ask us. Do we look gay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Naya, Naya. TC, what do you think? <laughs> I like her, dude. <laughs> <laughs> How does he have the smokers laugh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing is that she did all these dinners, exhausted, being grilled every single fucking night. Because also she worked 12 hours a day and then got pulled into her fun special dinner. Yeah. Oh, God. She didn't act as expected. She also had a really fucking bad period. She said that she was woozy. She was in horrible pain the entire yeah, time. She's a human being. She's yeah. a human being, yeah. yeah. So she was sent to Flag Vase in Clearwater, where she was assigned the condition of treason. Why? But she wouldn't go out on a date with Tom Cruise. Well, but she would go on a date with Tom Cruise, but she but didn't, she didn't act do like, it good. I don't think that Tom took good. her on a date. He had awkward dinners with he and David Miscavige. Uh, that's one. a date. No. David Miscavige is his date monitor. That's his wife pimp. <laughs> you mean to tell me again? <sighs> I so I don't even go to the grocery store without my wife pimp. <laughs> I know you don't. Because she helps me understand what women like. Mm -hmm. They uh -huh. like carrots. Mm -hmm. They like uh, uh, silly, soft cheeses. Silly yak free muffins. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
Yep. <laughs> well, to make up for it, she dug ditches and scrubbed toilets with a toothbrush. That's what Ugh. a treasonous person does. She was back in good standing after a few months, but she was never again allowed into the Celebrity Center. She was an actress, by the way, and she wasn't allowed to even talk about Tom Cruise. Huh. Thankfully, she left Scientology soon after and has since had a relatively successful TV career. Well, flipped and reversed it. Yeah. Nice. She, yeah, her. she does like, you know, five, six episode runs on things. Hold that. Great. Yeah. And then, of course... There's Katie Holmes. Oh, poor, poor Tomcat. Yeah, the yeah. details of which I'm sure you're probably all too familiar with. Needless to say, Scientology tortured this poor woman and made her life a living hell after she decided to leave, to the point where they were chasing her around New York City by yeah. the end of it. We all remember that. We all, I saw it. Yep. Yeah. Long story short, she left because Tom Cruise was weird. Scientology was weird, and her life had turned into a surreal nightmare. She got custody of their kid. She dated Jamie Foxx for six years. Lucky girl. Yeah, and is slowly returning to stage and screen. She's yeah. tall. She's very Natalie tall. Natalie doubled for her. Because it's hard for no Natalie kidding. to do stunt doubles because huh. stunt doubles, a lot of times, it's because there are not a lot of tall actresses. Yeah. But Katie Holmes is like five foot ten. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Good, Good get for Tom. <laughs> I guess. I like it. Not good for you know Katie. I like it. But he's five six, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to bring this up anymore. <laughs> Henry is a height apologist for all of these people. <laughs> I, we have different lives for different reasons. Uh, yeah. Tellingly, though, Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise's wedding was the one in which David Miscavige was Tom Cruise's best man. I cannot stress that enough. This fucking horrible psychopath that we've been talking about for six hours now was Tom Cruise's best man in 2008. Was that when it was? When they I, got married? Maybe. Yeah. Know, yeah. They actually pulled a Scientologist out of the hole to perform the ceremony. Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 And I then, love this yeah. stuff because and then he, he was. And then he got drunk and hit on Brooke Shields and they put him back in the hole. Yeah, back in the <laughs> hole. Oh, man. You can think about that. Brooke Shields still went to the fucking wedding. Yeah. I guess they made Hollywood's up. a sick place. It's, it's very a strange sick. land. Now, the thing about the services that Scientology has done for Tom Cruise over the years, wife pimping and such, building all these tennis courts. Imagination all land come to life. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Costs a lot of money. Mm. Right. But people like Tom Cruise, that's a, precisely where Scientology gets their liquid assets. See, while its membership continues to decline, its revenue keeps going up, partly because of how many rich and gullible people keep giving them money. Celebrities, of course, but there's others. As far as the celebrities go, it's known that in 2004, Tom Cruise gave $3 million to Scientology. In 2007, Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart Simpson, she gave $10 million. Whoa, she gave more than Tom? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tom's not very grateful. <laughs> well, Tom gets up. Tom's a lot more involved in the administration process. Yeah. Nancy oh, Cartwright's okay. just fucking, she's just giving him she's money. She's just giving him money. Handing out pamphlets. Yeah. That's weird that Bart Simpson would do that. Hey, it's not Bart Simpson. I think it's Brit Simpson's even tried to say that. They're like, mm -hmm. Bart is a member of the Simpson family. <laughs> yeah. Nancy is some weird person behind Bart. Mm -hmm. But I can see why these celebrities give. In fact, I can see why all the rich people give. It's not just celebrities. There's also the guy who created Boingo Wireless. If you ever been in a fucking airport and tried to get on the fucking shitty ass Wi-Fi, yep. it's Boingo Wireless and Bro, it never fucking works. I fucking hate fun names because <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, the product yeah, yeah. always sucks. Yeah, like Go-Go yeah. go or like, yeah, yeah whatever. And then you have to be like, fucking my Boingo isn't working. Uh -huh. You sound like an asshole. Boingo! Yeah. Now, he also created Earthlink. He created... Uh, fucking what was it? Helios. This guy's incredibly rich. These are, you also have one of the richest media moguls in Australia, a billionaire. He's a Scientologist. You have a pharmaceutical executive named Robert Dugan. $1.8 billion in net worth. He is Scientology's largest donor by far. Yeah, and I bet you they get tax breaks too. Like yeah. they're giving to mm -hmm. you're giving to a church. So yeah. you're gonna at some point you're getting a kickback as well. But the reason why these people continue to give is because for them, Scientology works. Yeah. Yes. The rich are richer still, and the celebrities are still rich and famous. Oh, yeah. Nancy Cartwright is worth $80 million. She's on season 34 of The Simpsons. John Travolta is still worth $165 million. He has all the private jets he wants. Yep. He can blow as many masseuses as he can fucking handle. I mean, and mm -hmm. poor Mike Rinder. Cause, I mean, not poor Mike Rinder. It's more like, it's interesting because when John Travolta and him, were they had a private meeting. That's where the masseuse kiss came from. Yeah, but the masseuse kiss came from when they, uh, Tom, or when John Travolta was like, hey, do you think I ought to take this movie called Pulp Fiction? To oh. Mike Rinder. Mike yeah. Rinder's like, I don't think playing a heroin addict is going to be a good look for Scientology. It's wrong. And then um, yeah, his masseuse just... came in and they they had a moment and then he laughed. And then it's like, then he's saddled with the secret and this whole thing. Yeah. 
Pulp Fiction is the only reason that he had a comeback. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom Cruise is worth $620 million. Does his own stunts. And he was just in a movie that is nominated for Best Picture. Top Gun Maverick is nominated for Best Fucking Picture. Scientology works for that motherfucker. And people are allowed to do whatever the fuck it is they want with their money. I Mm -hmm. really do think, and they remember, it's like they're they're allowed to do it. Yeah. So if that's what they want to do, if they want to waste their money like that, they absolutely can. And they're getting their own kickbacks too. But what they're funding is, again, legally... We cannot say they are guilty of human trafficking no. or murder, but it is seems to be well, a it's function just, of the organization. How is everything getting built? Human labor, yeah. yeah. Right. And that we, is how free. much money are they getting? And they're yeah. shipping them yeah. across right. like states and countries. Yeah. We can so say... An that, unpaid workforce. Yeah. Yes. We can yes. say that they have been charged with these things, yes. with being culpable in deaths. They have been... Well, I can... Do you want me to go into that? Uh, almost. But the thing is about these people... Uh, is that $3 million to Scientology, it's fucking nothing. You know? And if life is going the way you want it to and you have no conscience whatsoever about the consequences that your support of Scientology brings to other people, there's no reason to stop. Therefore, Scientology has been kept afloat by the big fish, even if the little fish have mostly stopped giving. But there's the matter of what David Miscavige has been doing these last 10 to 15 years. Because yeah. our narrative kind of stops around 2009. 2010. Well, that's it's interesting because there was a big clampdown on information that came out, especially because of the mass exodus of like Marty Rathbun, mm-hmm. Mike Rinder, all these big guys coming. Leah out. Remini, yes, the spilling, biggest one. Oh yes. yes, spilling all this this shit. And so now we're in this kind of sea of mystery of what the fuck goes on inside. Yeah, he's basically gone into hiding. Nobody sees David Miscavige. He is go. He goes back and forth from his various properties. But from what I can gather. So, like, where Scientology is at now is that, according to Mike Rinder's blog, again, this comes from him, the way he tracks it is that, obviously, they're highly secretive about what their members are. And they're saying that there's 8 to 10 million Scientologists around the world, which is not true. Mike Rinder says that even at their height, he believes that the most that there was was 50,000. But then, who knows? Again, they're saying he's an SP. He'll say whatever he wants. But in 2011, there was a census in England and Wales had said that there was 2,418 Scientologists that had registered. Wow, legally. that's it. By 2021, the number that had officially put on the list that they were, it already went down to 1854, wow. right? So they lost a bunch. So that's there's, just in England. That's yeah. just in England. Still not, I mean, England's big. Yeah. But he's saying that if you look at this track and the way he breaks down, he probably, he thinks that there's less than... 20,000 Scientologists on the whole across the world, which is why these ideal orgs are completely empty. They're all just fronts. You go like the one up in NoHo. Sometimes they'll have a couple. There's a couple people stationed outside, but that's because the Church of Scientology is doing this thing that's called like like the ladies who help Mm -hmm. because they're trying to show, oh, look, we're doing these like fundraiser things, things about specifically COVID. Are, was, they, are they wife pimps? They are. I don't know. <laughs> there was a nice lady wearing a t-shirt I saw outside of it the other day. The t-shirt said, mm, curious. curious. Well, I was driving by and I glanced. You're like, hi. Oh, you know, yeah. um, but David Miscavige, I think one thing that was interesting about what's going on right now is that there's been a release of documents about what happened when COVID-19 hit. Yeah. Right. Because Did they use it for their advantage well, and completely corrupt a narrative that was not supposed to happen? Sure. Yeah. But with the, it's actually... What we're seeing is that Scientology is probably at its very weakest because during, I believe that when COVID-19 hit, what we don't understand is that even if you're just a parishioner, you're supposed to go in every day. You're yeah. supposed to go to one of your orgs and audit and do your things. And you're supposed to, you have FaceTime, P2P with somebody at all times. I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. But you're supposed to do these things and, you're, and it keeps you in whole. It keeps you in check. It keeps you a part of the world. COVID-19 immediately legally they couldn't go everything and COVID-19 hit two days before LRH's birthday which is the biggest fucking party of the year Mm -hmm. David Miscavige was fucking furious right he sent this missive that now that we can't be together anymore and you can't be can't be we can do this anymore he called COVID-19 the term was a planetary bull bait which is like we're gonna see how we all react to it but so here's the hidden things we know that Scientology does not believe in viruses or disease they believe that you do it to yourself that you bring it in David Miscavige definitely still very much has asthma. He, severe it, asthma. Severe asthma. No, it's not true. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah. And so COVID-19, what does it do? What One of the big things, especially when it first came out, they're saying that it's going to fuck with people with asthma. Right. David Miscavige is incredibly scared of COVID-19, even though ostensibly he's supposed to say it doesn't exist. 
playing kayfabe if it was real. But instead, he says, what we're going to do is they want to see how Scientology is going to react during this. So he sent out the CDC guidelines repackaged as if it was Scientology's guidelines. And now huh. the Scientology orgs are so disinfected that the disinfectant is making people sick from being inside of it. Because David Miscavige won't go anywhere unless it has been completely slathered from head to toe yeah. and the same shit that they clean emergency rooms in. Probably just advancing uh, the virus actually even further yeah, because mutated. then it yeah. mutates <laughs> it and then it's and, like, and also, who gives a fuck, They have a zero yeah. sickness policy now. You can't even oh, have they have a zero sickness, sickness policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't even have sniffles. Yeah. You're immediately... And so imagine you actively have COVID. Now those of us who have it, right? We've had it. It sucks, right? Yeah. And when you have it, you like, you know, you're all, your brain fog and all fucked up as it is. But then you have to call your auditor and be like, I can't come in. I tested positive for COVID. They then are like, you are, you're getting audited over the phone. And what they're making them do now is take pictures Zoom of themselves audits? at home. Yeah. Yes. They're making themselves take pictures at home studying and sending them into their auditors. Like, look, you see, but all this being said, the hold is slipping. That's why we're yeah. getting more this there. The leaks are getting crazy. Like yeah. there's more that document got leaked a week later, which no one had ever like done really before because they were right. afraid of the immediate repercussions. They're not it's, on the Supreme Court. They don't usually yes. leak yeah. classified yeah. But information. Now, but now they're like out of it. They're out of the hold a little bit. So it's starting to get real wiggly. And now that David Miscavige was yeah. served with this essentially a human trafficking charge. I mean, that's right? what it is. That's yeah. a human trafficking charge. And just, just for details. So you can go onto it on your own. This is an accusation from Valeska Paris and Gawain and Laura Baxter that they okay. were residents of Australia. They were on Scientology's cruise ship, the Free Winds in the Caribbean. And basically what they're saying is, is that we were as children, we were raised into Scientology. We had to sign these documents that gave our soul over for a billion years right. that would allow us to then work for free whenever. And then we basically went to the Free Winds and we were tortured on this boat for a long period of time oh. and you this is free this is human trafficking and we're charging you with it but the, what's hard huh. is because they're fighting the actual essential nature of like how do we prosecute a group of people who have written down like a consent form they right and in a kangaroo court like because it's still just in their world but it's still a contract right sure so the billion year contract's like one thing where they said like well, that's a whole belief system. We we don't know, like, the courts are real icky about that. They don't know what to do with that yet. But there's another clause that Scientology makes you sign, which mm. is an arbitration clause that basically says you promise to handle any arbitration for what you feel as a malfeasance of Scientology within Scientology, not, like, in the court system. Like, you're supposed to. So right. what they're fighting is they're saying that they signed this arbitration document that said that, like, they can't, they, they can't, like, sue us they literally can't they sign their rights away and what they're trying to say is like but is it does it count if you sign a contract quote unquote under duress under duress yeah, and we exactly. don't know and so now they're really like this is this also they were children they were under 18 when they signed yes. this right so technically it doesn't matter but it's a really right? belief system it's a whole thing so that's why they're we hyper -hesitant. believe in human trafficking <laughs> <laughs> see we believe it but mm. again, wow. he's accused of these crimes. Right. So right, he is course. not yet guilty of these crimes. But it is it is an interesting idea of like, and it's also why the FBI is so hesitant to go and start busting on Scientology because it's really hairy to get into the fringe religion and, movement. And, as we just talked about. In Waco. Uh, billionaires. Oh, yeah. And billionaires. They got mm -hmm. plenty of money to throw into the process. And also, like, Mike Rinder brought up a good point where it's like, any FBI agent knows that as soon as I attack Scientology, that's the next 10 years of my life. Yeah. yeah. Is, I mean, is you thought, unhatching is trying to break this up. Look at the dude who fucking cracked the Monopoly game scandal. <laughs> that took four years. It took four years. That was a fun one. That's fun. Oh, yeah. That's the thing is that, you know, it does seem like the cracks are starting to show when it comes to David Miscavige's Scientology. Yeah. People are... His the, version, but, yeah. Yeah, the people are leaving. The documents are being leaked. He's getting served. People are chasing him right. down to serve him. So his reign may be nearing an end. And when it does end, I, for one, am fucking fascinated to see where Scientology goes from here. I just want to destroy the baseball again, team. <laughs> as the new head of Scientology, <laughs> I'm bringing in Friday Fish Fries. I honestly Smiles. make it fun. Yeah. Dude, I'll do it. I'll, I'll take care. I'll join with you. Right, we'll I want it. that. I mean, even if Miss Cavage manages to hold on for another 10 years or so, the rich celebrities will remain. Additionally, yeah. Scientology still owns all that real estate, and their tax-exempt status doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It is far too large to be taken down by, you know, the, the fall of their leader. 
someone is going to succeed David Miscavige, just Ooh. as Miscavige succeeded L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, I mean, he, who knows? Yeah, and I, for one, wouldn't be surprised if Scientology is still going a fucking century from now. Is but, it going to be Tom Cruise? I don't think he wants that responsibility. I don't think so. I, I think, think he, he wants. Wa- I don't think you can fly jet planes and and skydive all you that. You notice much. he hasn't. Well, he hasn't said very much about Scientology. And then Judd Apatow made that joke about him. And now, and then Gerard Carmichael made the joke about selling Miscavige. It's really starting to come out in the open. Mm-hmm. Tom Cruise, excuse me, he hasn't said fucking shit. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But I do think that the longer Miscavige stays in charge, the less of a chance Scientology has of making it to the century mark. But what I find most fun about Scientology is that they are now eternally on the defensive. Even if they stay dormant for years, as they did after Leah Remini launched her attack in 2013, their reappearance inevitably draws negative attention every single time. Hell, we're doing this series now partly because we were inspired by David Miscavige's star turn in a new Scientology ad campaign last November. We got reminded of the dickhead's existence. Like, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, we were going to do a fucking David Miscavige series. Yeah, They do not have a lot going on, judging by the fact they called all three of us. Yes. (laughs) Multiple. They called all three of us multiple times. And why the fuck did they call you before they called me? Buddy, the you unit. Know, again, ben? they smelled. They yeah. smelled in the water. <laughs> yeah. We can flip them. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah. Ben got called at 5.07 p.m. I got called at 5.09. I, I guess. was called at 5.07, 5.09 as well. So that was a busy minute for yeah, her. Mine was 5.15. <laughs> and, uh, and then at 5.30. Yeah, but they don't know. I don't answer my phone. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So, but, so, while they may last for a little while, at least into the coming decades, Scientology will likely never gain a foothold just so long as there's always someone around willing to make fun of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's the that's the one thing is that we're going to keep we're allowed to make fun of whatever we want. Yeah. Because it's yeah. fun. It's a comedy podcast. But we definitely came with a lot of bullshit. Mm-hmm. And you should read it some of yourself. I, 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 if you're a Scientology member that is now currently listening this scanning, right, for whatever you're being told to do, like, dude, lady. <laughs> it's better outside of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely. Just, just hear what we're saying. I could have flipped right? that it's, chick if I would have answered. You may be actually <laughs> I know, true, I know. But I just like, hear what we're saying. It's so, again, it's legal. You're allowed to do whatever the fuck it is you want sure. with your fucking, your Thetan containing husk. You're allowed to. But just, we're, we're trying to help you before something really bad happens to you. Because, unfortunately, it seems the more people stay in, the longer they stay in this organization, the worse it is for them and their families. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Help, help the Scientologists out there in help the street. Help a Scientologist. Be mm-hmm. nice to the Scientologist. If you, if somebody is out there give it, trying to give you an e-meter reading, trying to give you a personality test, don't be mean to them. They sound afraid. Yeah. Really, that's what it is. The fear comes across. Yeah. The desperation comes across. You do, you're not operating from a place of power yeah. right now. Be Unless your father please. is Joseph Fritzl, you should never be separated from your family. You're right. Uh, yes. That would be a massive red flag. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, go and read any of one of these fucking stories that we covered, like, you know, Ron Miscavige's book. We had fucking uh, Mike Rinder's book. We have Mark Headley's book. We have the there's the whole Tampa Bay Times, like L.A. Times. There's so much stuff. Like just just go have fun. The underground bunker. Tony Ortega. That's Tony hours Ortega. of fucking listening. Yeah. All yeah, it's very interesting. All right, everyone. There it is. Our three parter on Woo! David Miscavige and Man, his oh mishandling. Man. Of Scientology. Oh, thank you. And any Scientologist, right. if you want to come out and see Classy Night Out with me <laughs> and Ed Larson, we're going to be at the Pack Theater Wednesday, March 8th, 8 p.m. That's at the 6320 Santa Monica Boulevard. New address for the Pack Theater. Awesome. Check it out. We're there. And then come go to Get It Made LA slash Disaster Man to buy tickets for live side stories April 8th. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for supporting all the shows, Marcus. Uh, if there is a Scientologist who is working the L. Ron Hubbard booth, at WonderCon at the end of this month out in Anaheim. Come on over and see us at the Z2 booth. We're going to be signing on Friday and Saturday at the Z2 booth. Going to be signing the last comic book on the left. And we're going to be doing a panel on Saturday morning. So check out uh, all the schedules over at WonderCon to see exactly when and where we're going to be there. And I believe it was sent out on our newsletter. I so believe. Sign up for our yes. newsletter Which to is get fun all stuff. of the we information. Got our, yeah, Michelle makes good stuff on that. It's really she fun. Does. Yeah, I, I like our newsletter. And then, of course, you guys are going to want to, you know, uh, join us and uh, don't talk to your family anymore. And I mean, uh, Honestly, just you know? so you know, you do speak with us. We encourage a lot of our fans to not talk to their parents anymore yeah, because, sure. again, <laughs> their <laughs> influence is really bad. And we want yeah. you to make sure you yeah. can queef the clearest that you can. And that's our whole thing is creating clear queefs. Clear queefs. <laughs> Thank you all so much for supporting all the shows here on the network. 
and uh, yeah just uh, and we're uh, also by the way don't forget every tuesday the stream is back so go to patreon yeah, and, uh, it's live on Patreon, it live. It's really, and, really PSA. and No Dogs in Space is about to return with a two-part series on The Monks. Yeah, what, cool. What a, yeah, yeah. Sweet. yeah. It's All right, not what fuckers. you gain. It's, <laughs> it's what you lose. <laughs> All right, everyone. Hail yourselves. Hail Satan. Again. Hail me. And thank you, Satan, for giving me the strength to be a fucking warrior for truth. I am every fucking every day. I'm your soldier, buddy. Wow. I'm your fucking shoulder. All you right? just completely, just completely derailed the past three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah. did. Especially when you told Satan that you were his shoulder. Yeah, you were his shoulder. <laughs> I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Hail yourself. Talk Bye. to you soon. Bye. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com.